your top this evening When I heard music echo through the night The same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late I didn't think that I would ever see your face again But I was wrong, yeah I was wrong When I got close, my heart was pumping To the beat that was blasting through the night And on the street, the crowd was jumping Singing songs and dancing through the night I didn't think that I would ever see your face Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick. The one, the only, Hecklefish. That's good. This working. Hello. Hello. Thumbs up. I see levels on the on the thing. And the thing is there. I think we got, got 51,000 in there tonight. That's pretty good. Pretty good for a hollow earth. Um, I, it's, a, it's a subject I really like. So I want to put this comment up from Quantum Sledgehammer. Um, thank you for the support, Quantum, by the way. Very generous uh, support of the channel. Love the show. But when it comes to underground cities, how did the whole ep go by without a single mess mention of this being a lizard people civilization? That revelation would sure fill in some holes. I see what you did there. Um, it was going to have that, Quantum. Uh, it's just the hollow earth was so, it's so much that I got a few hours in into researching it. And I'd say I can't cover, I can't do an entire hollow earth. So I just zeroed in on Agartha. Um, so lizard people was, was on the mind, but we'll say we'll get another episode out of it. Right. I mean, there's plenty more to do hollow earth wise. And there's still that, that reptilian, uh, city underneath LA that I'm dying to cover. There's just not a, there's not a ton of stuff about it out there, but I'm dying to cover it. You know, that engineer went there and he found the tunnels. So, uh, so I, I, you know, that would be a good place to cover it because that's kind of hollow earth, right? It's underground. That counts. Uh, what's going on in the chat? Who's here? Casey Aaron's here. Hi, everybody. There's Gareth, Nick Gill. I see you. Brian Pickle. Uh, thinks it was a good job. Thanks. OHC says great episode. DSDRN. He did. I don't know. What did I miss? What did I miss? Um, Sizzle Wizzle is there. Ryan, uh, it went by too fast. I, I'm, I'm looking at Jen now. It's slow mode. We're in slow mode, huh? All right. 
Uh, Channel Boy says, Y Files, love you guys and some silly people in the chat too. Yeah, it gets silly in there. Jordan's random thoughts is here. That's true. Alan Carruthers is here. Captain America enjoyed the episode. Thanks, Cap. I'm trying to scroll to keep up with it. Sire Lord, Hollow Moon. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite episodes on the channel. Uh, take a look at that one if you haven't seen it yet. The Hollow Moon episode. Crazy. That's an episode that I went into it thinking this is the dumbest conspiracy theory I've ever heard. Because remember, I, I don't fully believe most of the stories here. I just like them. But I, you know, you can like a story and not believe it at the same time. Um, so I went into the moon thinking this is this is the wackiest one that I've ever covered. And then about halfway through the research, I'm like, eh, you know, moon hollow, there's some good points. But still, it's pretty weird. It's out there. And by the time the episode was finished, I was like, the moon's definitely hollow. That's not even a debate at this point, right? That's that's just fact. And who would even question that? It's clearly hollow. Atomic uh, Snowflake is there. Hi from Arkansas. Andrea Steck wants more lizard people. Dev, congrats on the 50K. Yeah, that's pretty great. Because you know, uh, you know how insecure I am about the episodes every week. You know, when when we're in the in the Discord. By the way, if you're if you want to support the channel on Patreon, you get access to two extra live streams a week. And uh, before the Thursday premiere, we we're there. And then uh, tomorrow morning, we're there as well. And it's it you know how the chat is crazy here. Uh, at least on the the Patreon Discord, everyone gets a chance to talk. So um, so every week I'm on there. And people are saying, yeah, there's, you know, 1,500 waiting, 2,500 waiting. And I'm just, is that good? Are we, are we okay? Is I, that's bad, right? No, it's good because I don't really know. But you can't, you can't uh, do YouTube as a career without uh, being an insecure imposter syndrome. That's, you have to have that. That's your baseline. That's your foundation. Like people want to, how do I get started being a creator? Well, first be very insecure about your abilities. That's the, go in with that. And then um, as you get better, understand that you're still terrible and you don't know why anyone even likes your stuff. And that's your, that's your base. That's your foundation. You go, you build from there. If you hate yourself, even better. Uh, Perfect Mint gives a thousand a month. Cause I love this. Are you in the thousand a month tier? Perfect Mint. There are, there are not that many people in that Patreon tier. I see Paul is here. He's in the tier. Uh, Jax is in the tier. I don't know. Uh-oh. Someone's here. Did you hear that? You hear that? You hear it? Think we're okay? We're probably okay. It's the, the guy next door. I'm still in the warehouse. The guy next door, his door doesn't fit or something, I guess. So he can't exit the building without slamming it like a bunch of times. You know, like an as good as it, it, it gets, the Jack Nicholson just, but he counted it. This guy slams it four, five, six, which is annoying. It makes me jump every time. But when you're trying to, when you're on recording and stuff, it's a little irritating. But we're almost out. We're almost out of here. Jen is making great progress with the studio. Victoria is over there helping out. Gino and the boys are there as well. Angel Biz 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 Morales B. What's up, AJ? What's up? It's cracking. What's popping? Johnny Patterson's here. Fizz gig. How many subs before you get paid? I don't know what you mean. How many subs before you get paid? Oh, you mean to get into the partner program? It used to be, I think it used to be a thousand. For me, it was a for me, it was a thousand subs, but they reduced it, I think last month to 500. It had had a I think it was a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. And boy, that took a long time to get that. Oh my god, it took a long time. Is someone? It was funny. Someone on the Wi Files Reddit just—I uh, I mean, I don't know when they posted. I was reading it last night, which I, I shouldn't do because there's a lot of criticism on there. But it's fine. I was reading it, and one of the guys was posting. He's saying he's suspicious of the channel because the Wi Files being an overnight success is seeing unprecedented growth that no channel has ever experienced. Which he wasn't trying to pay me a compliment, but I took it as one. And uh, but there were fans in the in the Reddit who came to my defense, I guess his defense, saying, "Yeah, it was a two-year overnight success." 
And that's, that's kind of what, what happened. It, you know, we, it, the channel's still growing at a nice pace, but not like it was at the beginning of the year. I mean, it's growing half the speed at the beginning of the year, which is fine. Not complaining, but, uh, but to say that this channel came out of nowhere with unprecedented growth, come on, man. It's almost kind of insulting in a way. Cause I, I was on episode 70 before anyone even watched. It was getting to, I mean, I almost quit a few times. It was getting to the point where I was just making episodes just to stay, just to keep editing, keep the skills sharp, just to, just to do something. Cause I'd make the episode and, and put everything I have into it, knowing nobody's going to watch this. And for a long time, I was right. So yeah, no overnight success here. To Toad Medicine is there. Loves the channel. Good to see you, Toad. John Smith, I see you. Popcorn Power. I like that you debunk the stories at the end. When I can, Popcorn. Um, you know, I get a lot of, I don't want to say hate, but people get annoyed in the comments that, uh, that I'm ruining the mysteries for them. But I mean, don't you want to know if it's true or not? Or you just want to believe? I mean, if you just want to believe, that's fine. Just believe. Just believe what you want to. And, you know, if you're, once you get the hang of this channel, watch three quarters of the way through and then you're good. But the, the, I produce the episodes like I, like I want to consume the content. I want to hear the story. Tell me the story in a fun way. And then tell me what's real. And then the best stories are like the one tonight where I, I gave you as much fact as I can. This was a hoax. That was a hoax. That's not true. This was a spin. But it's not fully debunked. Could the earth be hollow? Yeah. Can't prove it. Cannot prove it's not. Can't prove it's solid. Especially if the, the transition zone is right between, is around 300 miles, 250 to 410. We can only drill seven miles. So if there's stuff down there, we, we, we're not aware of it. So we can't prove it's there, but we can't prove it's not. And those are the best kind. Those are the best stories. Wagman's asking, what about the hollow moon? I was just saying that's one of my favorite conspiracies. That's one that, that turned me. Um, Bosco says, you don't really need to justify yourself to us. I know. I just, Bosco, I, I use this stream is, there's a few reasons for this stream. One is it's a fundraiser for the channel. And I'm very honest about that. I appreciate the super chats and everything, but you know, this is, this is a, a an audience supported, uh, channel. So it, it's fundraiser. Second is just to connect with you, you know, connect with the audience, get to know everybody's name and, and see everybody in here. Um, and then the, really the third reason is it's like a therapy session. You know, I can just tell you what's on my mind, what's bothering me. So, and I'm holding back because I was on Reddit last night. So the things that are bothering me, it's a list. It's a whole list of stuff that's, it's, that's, that's driving me nuts. It's in my, I'm thinking about it now. As I'm doing other stuff, I'm thinking about it. But that's part of the, that's part of the deal. You know, when I said be, you have to be insecure to do this. So when you're insecure, it doesn't matter how many compliments you get. What you remember are the, the insecure. You know, everyone else saying great job, great channel. That's, you know, that's, that's the fuel that keeps us going as, a, as, as a, someone who does this, but you really remember the negative comments. And the reason that I was in there, like I mostly will engage on Twitter or X, or whatever it's called now. Um, but only, only, only if it's fun, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop weighing in on UFO stuff and I'm just going to stop. Because people are getting annoyed. You know, if I think something is a psyop or think someone's legitimate or I have, you know, I'm like, I don't know about that guy. This guy's probably okay. I'm just, I'm not going to say anything. It's because it's not worth annoying people. And Twitter is a place to go with, to be angry at stuff. And I don't use it for that. I just want to, I want to post memes, pictures of, of cats. Um, yesterday was the picture of the, of, of the chubby woman falling on the, the treadmill. And it threw her, it threw her on the floor at the gym. And then when you're like, oh, that's terrible. Then the treadmill spinning ripped her pants off. And then it's like, oh, it was, it was just, that's what, that's what Twitter's for. So I wanted to use that. 
But I was on Reddit like, oh, let me check in, see what people think, and just say hi if there's questions for me and stuff. Let me engage with the audience. And 10 minutes in, I was like, oh, I should have never done this. Should have never, never been in here. You know, because criticisms are fine because this channel is built off of audience feedback. And that's 100% true. Even the format that I've kind of landed on, this is not how it's always been. It just We just kind of worked our way here. You know, the, the fact that we do live premieres every week, that was an audience, that was someone from the audience who suggested it. I wish I remember who it was. Um, every, the t-shirts that you see, the, the topics that we do, it all comes from you. So criticism is fine. Um, even if it's criticism like, uh, the color looks terrible this week, you know, fix it. Cause sometimes, cause I, I'm just not good at color. That's why every episode looks, looks different. That stuff is fine. But when a comments like, bro, you suck. The AI episode was shit. That's your comment. That's, that's all the information. <laughs> um, that's not helpful. That's just you being angry. And then you make me angry, which is, uh, not 100% true because creators, they get angry. We will express anger when people are watching, but the feeling that we really feel is hurt. It's like, oh, dude hurt my feelings and probably, and you know, doesn't care, doesn't know. Shades of Grace says, screw the trolls. Yeah, man. But it's, it's part of the deal. And look, if, you're, if your channel gets 10, if you have 10 times the audience, you have 10 times the jerks. So that's why I think in this chat, and I'm not 100% sure how Jen set it up, but you have to be a subscriber for a length of time to be to even be in here. Oh, I'm sorry. The the phlegm is just, it's just, it's thick. Mm, do I watch the After Files live stream or do I punch myself in the face? Tough decision. Thanks, chat. Flightless Traveler is there. Uh, Foch 41, Foch, folk. Chat is going crazy. It is going crazy. Venomous Silverback is there. Enjoys the channel. Appreciate it. Rod Brez says, 51,000 live can't be wrong. And he makes a great point. And that's that's a number that's, like, think about if we had all the live people watching it, in, in a stadium. Fill a stadium with the number of people watching. That's amazing. That's bonkers. And yet... I'm obsessed with the one dude who said, bro, you suck. And that's it. That's what his, his, his message. And I walk around thinking about it. You know, I'm here going, 51,000, I guess it's fine, but I suck. Because it reinforces. We think we do suck. And the more people watch, the more tricky it is. You know, what's your secret? Why so many people? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know. I thought we'd get, you know, 100,000 people in here after a few years, 100,000 weirdos like myself telling stories. It went a different way. Amen's there. appreciate that. Charles Blacher's there. Good to see you. Chadwick Studios. Good to see you. Mike Boyd's here. GPRS. Cedar Ranch. Hi. Titanium is going to have another drink. Or you're offering me another drink. Or I should take a drink. Yeah, so this episode this week took a lot out of me. It's another one that was published right at the last minute. I think it went up at like 3, 3 o'clock, 2 or 3 o'clock for, for a 6 o'clock premiere. It was a beast to write because there's so much to research. So when someone says, take another drink, it, like as I was getting ready for this, I was like, man, I wish I had some, I wish I had some booze in the studio just to kind of just to settle things down a little bit, just a little bit of booze, but I don't keep liquor here because I would drink it. So, so, so this place has no liquor and has no potato chips. So we're fine. Cause if those are in the house, those get consumed. So can't have another drink. Um, Ohio Kyle five thirteen is that vodka or water? That's, that's just water. I look, I would, if it was here, I would, I would have a, I, I wouldn't drink on the live stream, but I would have had a, you know, shot. I would have had a couple of fingers, a couple of fingers to, to settle the nerves, but that has to be it. You don't want to, you don't want to drink too much in the live stream. 
you know, um, look, I'm a, I'm a happy drunk. You know how they say, you know, someone's true personality when they're intoxicated, you know, that guy who's like, he's nice, he's fine, but he gets drunk and he's a jerk. We all have that friend. I have at least two friends that are super great guys, but as soon as they drink now, we're in a bar fight. So, you know, that's, that's the real personality. And then you have fun drunks, fun drunks like me, like, like Jen, I'm fun. I'm happy. I'm fun, which you would think is good for a stream, but it's, that's risky. That's risky because I just like, ah, let's let, let's let it hang out tonight. Yeah. Jen's down there going, don't let it hang out. Um, all right, let's look at a couple of super chats. Uh, there's Paul, the biggest supporter of the channel on the planet for hundred dollars. Paul is, I am frowny. I am sad. I'm sorry to hear that, Paul. I know that you sent me an email. I see it in there. I haven't checked anything yet. I haven't checked my email in, uh, in a while, in a while, because this week was hard. I think next week is going to be a little bit easier. Man, when the episode's done, like Tuesday night, it feels like I don't know what to do with myself. That's just how I'm wired. I have to constantly be busy. Some people call it type A, but that, I don't think it's type A because you, I could be busy with Xbox. That's fine. I could be busy with Xbox and a cocktail. Um, so it's not always work, but I, I need to constantly be engaged. You know, I was ADD before it was cool, before they gave you good drugs for it. Um, so when... When I'm done early, I, I don't know what to do with myself. It's a, it's actually very stressful. But that's when I usually catch up on emails. Now, I can't get to everybody. I read everything. I can't respond to everybody. But Paul's a big supporter of the channel. So uh, so he always gets a, gets a response. Who else is here? Mike and Murph. $10. Thanks for another week of thought-provoking entertainment. You're welcome, Mike. I'm glad you're there. And there's the dude, a uh, 87 longtime supporter of the channel. I was just wondering if the Pentagon approved everything David Grush said, was saying ahead of the UFO hearing, then why would there be a whistleblower investigation if they already approved it? Yeah, so everything he's going to talk about has to be approved by the Pentagon because they check to make sure he's not going to be revealing state secrets. Then why is he a whistleblower? I don't know. The whole thing is confusing. This is the kind of issue that I don't want to talk about on Twitter anymore because if, if I'm just... Like, ah, something's fishy about this. Suddenly it's like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh, here he is, you know, toe in the line. Here he is. This he might as well. Why files is it's the new New York Post. It here, here's a guy carrying water for Stephen Greenstreet, who's the Steve Greenstreet is the big like skeptic from the post. And I just was slammed with Green Street comments. I had never heard of the guy before that day. I didn't know who it was. I was just saying. Uh, this guy's, these guys counter Intel, everything he says has got to be approved. I don't know what the whistleblower thing is. Maybe we should be skeptical, you know, maybe Elizondo and all those other guys that all come from Intel, maybe just be skeptical. Twitter didn't like that. So I had to keep apologizing, not for what I said, what I said was correct, but I had to keep explaining that, look, I believe I believe in aliens, the craft. I believe the government has them. I believe in all of that. I don't believe people that work for the government, though. And I want to be wrong about them. I don't want to be like, ha ha, told you so. No, no, I don't want that. I want them to be right. I want someone, I want, I want Grush to put us in touch with someone who's like, oh, this guy, he's high up there. I think let's flip him, get us in there. Let's live stream from Area 51 or wherever. Live stream it. Let's have some independent journalists on there, not from mainstream media, from, from YouTube, and verify everything. That's what I want to happen. It's not about being right. So, yeah, that's why I'm not going to do that on Twitter anymore. Uh, 37 Custom Toys, my Super Chat didn't post help. Well, let me see, man. Let me see what's going on. I'm scrolling through. I've, I see there's Lamont in there, Brian. Sean Fan, Diana, John the Savage, Robert Cox. The, the thing is, um, 37, when you super chat, the software we're using, StreamYard, automatically stars them for me. I maybe just didn't get to it yet because it stars them in order. And there are 80 people ahead of you. So if it's there, I'll get to it. President Dwayne Elizondo, Mountain Dew Camacho. 
the second. Caught the Three Amigos reference in the team way. I'd love the show. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm glad you caught that. I saw a couple of people in the chat caught it. And look, I guess I guess Timu is a controversial sponsor. If it is, that's that's news to me. I shop with them. You know, stuff is cheap. The, like the acoustic foam. I wish I could show you. Can I tw turn it around? Like the the acoustic foam for the walls. It's like a, th a third of the price there. So people are like, oh, you know, that's China. Well, yeah. Where does everything comes from? China. But uh, so I'll look into them and see if there's something more there. But if it's just we don't like China, I I don't know what to to do about that, ma'am. Uh, there's Colorado Kid 499. Hey, absolutely love the Y files and your stories. Please do an episode on the Mandela effect. I've seen verses in my 40 plus year old Bible change. That's interesting, Colorado Kid. And you've confirmed that this is not a, a different translation of the Bible. I covered, I uh, did a chapter on Mandela in the simulation theory episode. So, um, you know, if you're Jonesing, you can get some there. The reason I haven't done a full episode on it is when I don't really believe it. I don't, well, that's not true. I don't fully believe it because a lot of those false memories, I don't affect me. Like I don't have them. Berenstain Bears, all that stuff. I remember it correctly. But Gino challenged me one day because he's, he's throwing Mandela's at me. And look, and I'm knocking him down. I'm nothing but net. And he hits me with Moonraker, James Bond, Jaws at the end of the movie. And he's taking me through it. Do you remember the movie? Of course, Moonraker. I mean, when I was that age, it was the best James Bond movie ever made. But, you know, I was young. I hadn't learned yet. So he's like, got oh, Moonraker? Yep. Remember Jaws at the end and it comes out of the, 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 the crash, the, rub, the, the trash? Yeah, I remember. His, the girl's there. Mm -hmm. Daisy, remember her? And he goes, do you remember her braces? I'm like, sure, remember her braces. What else you got? It's like, she didn't have braces. And I'm in the car, and I had to, I had to force myself to focus on the road because I wanted to, I was freak, like, I was freaking out inside. Like, you ever have that feeling where you, you know you have to keep calm, but inside the emotions, we just want, you just want to, so I'm driving, and I'm, I'm like shaking. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, nah, there was no, she didn't have no braces. And I, I was in denial until, and then he calls it up on his phone. And from there, I became more open to, man, maybe Mandela effects affect me a little bit more than I thought, and they do. There's, I, I'm, uh, plenty of them have affected me. But I haven't covered it too much, Colorado Kid, because I think everybody else has. You know, how many times can we see the Fruit of the Loom logo? You know, I don't know what new stuff I could bring to it. But what I'll do is I'll keep throwing it in there for spice when we cover when we cover stories that where it fits, like simulation theory, many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is coming. That it that could work there, right? You know, multiverse. It was Berenstein in the other timeline. I don't know why it would be that, but you know, that kind of thing. So I, maybe I'll mix it in there. Unless you want to email me a list of like amazing Mandela's, I'll take a look at that. Coming up, coming up. I don't have a long hour long, you know, Reddit thread or four chan. I don't have any of that tonight, which is probably I don't know if anyone's going to complain. Um, but I found a couple of very cool, very weird uh, videos on Twitter, and Victoria found a bunch more. So we'll get into those uh, tonight. We do have a Gino story hour, and Gino, almost almost on time with the show prep. I mean, mostly, mostly on time with the show prep. It's, you know, my boys all growed up. Uh, so that's coming up. And uh, and your super chats, your questions, your comments. If there's anything you want me to deep dive on, let me know. Becky Ward is there. Another good episode. An ad spot. All Gertie features have me wondering if she has one hump or two. Also, we need a Gertie heckle shirt, please. 
The two hump camel is a, I think there's something specific about that. Like camels have one hump and that's that. And then there's a, there's a specific kind of camel that has two, but Gertie just has the one. Did you see her picture on the board tonight? You know, the board changes every week, sometimes just the slightest thing, but that bulletin board changes every single week. Same with um, Hecklefish's bowl. Well, she's on the board tonight. And did you see the, the photo strip from the photo booth? Like I watched the chat to see how jokes are landing and that one didn't land as, as well as I hoped. I even did a punched in to see it. And she, I found a picture of, of Gertie smiling like with the teeth, but it, I, it didn't really land. Um, but Becky, people have asked for Gertie, Gertie shirts or a Gertie plushie. Maybe a talking Gertie plushie that just makes her grunting sounds that entertain me so much. Jen loves it. I see her down there. She's, she loves it. Country Chronicles um, is here. I love you too, man, or woman, or person, whatever. I don't know what the rules are, but I'm glad you're here, and I appreciate the support. The Tech 10, AJ, comment on National Park Disappearances. I don't cover the 411 stuff, uh, Tech 10, because um, David Polides covers it so well. And we'll probably cover 411 missing persons on the What Files, which will be the, the next channel launching sometime in the near future probably and that's going to be that's going to be true crime i don't cover a lot of that stuff on the y files because when there's someone goes missing it's often a victim and i, I just don't want to do that here i don't want to get demonetized also um but we also for some reason we have a lot of kids watching so i just i want to keep it a, a little bit less uh, murdery and as you know a lot of those national park disappearances are kids so I, I don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> I could do it here. It's a little more lenient here, but not on the episodes. And what's with the kids always missing their shoes? Have you noticed that? A lot of times they're missing their shoes. All right, we've got some some camel advice in the chat. That's always It's always good to have camel experts around. Rob Collins says, smash the like button. Smash it indeed. or Or gently massage it, tweak it. Missing Persons is an awesome band, Purposeful Porpoise. Uh, showing your age, being the same age as me. Becky, we got to you. I appreciate the support. Jeff Wallace is there for $5. Thanks for another great story. So what do you think? Is Mars hollow too? Well, that was the that was part of the, the theory with, um, you know, during Haley's time or at least the believers in that, is that all, all planets are, are hollow. And then Euler had that hypothesis that the way gravity works, it, it throws all the matter out from the center of gravity and that creates a hollow shell. That's not really how that would work. And um, if you remember, I debunked Euler as part of that story. So when you're looking into hollow earth and you see Euler mentioned, that's not, he never, that's just added on. Because that's what a lot of these stories are, right? It's internet stories that just one YouTuber says it and then the other YouTuber says it and adds a little and then he adds a little and next thing you know. So I try to I try to clear all the weeds out of there if I can. Um, so I don't think it's hollow as well. But uh, we do have a – we got an interesting script that was supposed to be for this week, but I, I, it was just too, uh, too technical about the expanding Earth theory. Um, so it's hollow earth, but it's also how, like, we know that the continents drift, right? We, we know that happens. And you can see that they fit together. Like, definitely the east coast of the U.S. and Europe, and like, that all fits. But also the west coast of the U.S. fits as well. Like, everything fits. And the only way to make that truly fit is to make the earth smaller. So I'm reading that. And this, this, you know, this is someone else wrote the script. This is not none of my research. I'm reading that. I'm like, man, that sounds crazy. That doesn't sound right at all. I looked into it, and it's, it's, it's not a mainstream theory, but it is somewhat mainstream that the Earth is getting bigger and has been getting bigger for whatever reasons. But his theory was it's expanded a lot. It's hollow inside, and that's why the continents don't fit anymore. I thought it was a it, it was a really it's a really good concept, but the script is it's dense. We need to add we need to add jokes. We need more camel and fart jokes. 
Thanks for the support, Jeff. Uh, Seamus M is there. Good to see you. Seamus, fun episode. Can't wait for more moon. Cheers, AJ and crew. Oh, see the footage of a UAP travel into the Mesa and out on SWR where we're, we're at. It's happening levels. I hope we are. I mean, I think I hope we are. I hope, I hope we hope we are. I hope, you know, I hope that if it's happening, that it's going to be okay. I would think it's going to be, right? If aliens wanted to do us harm, they probably would have done that already. But I don't know. But I, you know, I have fears. I have fears about um, the governments of the world finally admitting about the alien presence and then using that as a way to grab more power. You know, well, we're going to need a bigger budgets for this, and we're going to need that, and we're going to need more taxes and more this and curfews because the aliens. Uh, we got to keep our eye on that. So we want this closure, but we want we don't want people to to have more power because they had so much power. Is why there why there's so many secrets about it. So let's blow the secrets open, and no, you can't have more money for weapons to attack them. Let's not do that. Um, but I haven't seen uh, that footage. Seamus, so if you put that in the chat, if you can, I don't know if you can, but if you put that in the chat, I'll uh, I'll put that in our list. I've got a, I got a few UFO videos at one, two, three, four, five, six, six UFO videos, three pretty good shadow person sightings, ghost on a highway, ghost on the bus, and then um, these guys took their boat down to Antarctica. Because you know how you're not – this was like a, a thing I got into a, on chat with somebody months ago, probably with the high jump episode, is you can't go to Antarctica. You cannot go there. One guy was like, oh, you can go there. When you can just go. You can't go there. There's a, It's like the only worldwide treaty that's been adhered to for however many years. You can't go there without permission from a lot of folks. So they went down there to test the theory. Not only did they get chased off, they got chased off by a destroyer, which is down there. For some reason, there are big, big boats patrolling Antarctica. I'm not sure why, but you can't go there. Buzz Darkin is back with the Mastiffs. Fun episode. My Mastiffs are busy excavating a huge hole in the backyard, even as we speak. Odin's hole episode. Thanks again. I guess, you know, this is just another episode. We have to start a whole playlist on the channel, right? Just everything, everything that's whole related goes in there. And it would actually be a be a pretty good play, playlist. Mel's Hole is still very popular. Everyone wants to get inside Mel's Hole. There's Drift 318 for $10. Hollow Earth is where all my socks that disappear out of the dryer go to. They do go there somewhere. Remember Seinfeld's bit about that? It's, it still holds up. So how dryers, they would stick to the end inside. Like when you're in there fishing the laundry out, one dryer would stick like it's a prison break. And he would just kind of wiggle his way out. That's Seinfeld from the 80s. Brian Munar is there. Hello, Earth Society is maybe refugees of the last planetary reset. Great episode. I could, I could definitely see that theory. You know, like I said tonight, it makes more sense to me it's it's more feasible. I, I at least I think so. You tell me what you think. It's more feasible that there would be a society living deep inside the earth that's been here for a long, long time, millions of years, and that's why there's no evidence of them Silurian hypothesis and all of that because they're inside. So, and they went in there a million years ago. That makes more sense to me than a civilization that learns how to bend space time or create wormholes to cross you, you know, many, many light years of distances. That seems, that seems way more far fetched, especially when you consider all the crashes, like the UFOs are, they're constantly crashing, right? So you figure if you have the technology to bend space time, that you're not going to get in trouble with a thunderstorm in New Mexico. But that's that's bringing down craft. But if you are a society that spent a million years or 10,000, whatever, 100, 200,000 years inside the earth where there is no lightning, where there really is no weather like this, maybe you didn't, You, I mean, you. why would you even build the technology, right? Because you maybe you don't even know it's there. It's like if we fly a plane and suddenly we get, 
you know, it's just chocolate pudding, just big, like just chocolate pudding falls from the sky and it's, it's stuck in the, in the propellers and the engine, just chocolate pudding. And the plane crashes from the pudding attack. And people are like, I thought they were so advanced. They didn't anticipate pudding, but to us, we don't have pudding in the sky. Something to think about. Ron Klotzer, thank you for $5. Hey, Jay, could Mel's Hole be an entrance? Almost have my application in. This $5 is to grease the process. All right, Ron. Bribery works around here. Um, I don't know if Mel's Hole is real. You know, even the story, you know, which is from coast to coast from the great Art Bell. That's Mel's, Mel's Hole. The entire story comes from, from Mel calling into Art's show. If you listen to all, I don't know, it's like five hours. The later episodes, which happened a couple of years after the first, the guy's voice sounds different to me. But other people have said, no, it's the same guy. To me, it sounds different. So I don't know if Mel's hole is a real thing. But if you remember the episode, I found some pictures that are very compelling. That it looks like it looks like Mel's hole, just how he described it. The building, the outbuildings that he that Mel described on his property, they're there. Um, one of them is caved in from snowfall, just like he said. People have gone there and they said it's just a well. That's all it is. But I don't know. It looked pretty good. It looked like someone could finally get inside Mel's hole. Daniel Rodriguez for $10. Gino did the guy from the story last week get spanked with the Van Allen belt asking for a friend. Is that getting some views? Let's let, 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 Let's check. Hang on, hang on. I got to figure it out. All right, so it's the Y Files backstage. And uh, we've got a playlist there for Gino Story Hour. And where's our right, Alien Erotica is up to one point. Uh, it's 1,900 views. It's pretty good. So, uh, so people do like that one, Daniel. By the way, if you. We pull clips from this and put them on backstage. If you don't want to just, you don't want to hear this stuff. If you just you just want Gino Story Hour because that's your, that's your jam. That's that's how to get it. I mean, but while the browser's open, we might as well pay a couple of bills, right? I appreciate everyone super chatting and supporting the channel. It really, really does help keep us going, and the super chats are are generous tonight. So I'm grateful for that, and um, thanks to the patrons who keep all this stuff going and patreon is the best way to support the channel by the way and there's a whole bunch of tiers but it starts at three bucks so look if, if you're a if you're not a patreon member and you super chatted 35 40 dollars that's great i'm glad you did that but that's like a whole year of patreon and plus the 40 dollars the channel only gets half of that on patreon they let us keep like 95 percent and um and i use a. Uh, I use a chunk of that money to to tip the staff, so it helps keep the staff smiling and working, for, and uh, pays for free lunch Fridays. But if Patreon's not your thing, you just and you want to get stuff for your money, you can go to shop.thewildfiles.com. Every week for for the episodes, we do a custom T-shirt. They're only up there for a short time. You know, scarcity creates value. I think I, I learned that in a marketing class. So this is this week's. Uh, designed by SMK, Rob, the official artist of the Y-Files. And I guess that's, oh, it's Hecklefish coming out of the hollow earth. So that's on there. I think you could, oh, hang on. Oh, oh my goodness. Could you once, I mean, could you just one time conduct this live stream in a professional manner? The lizard people crossing shirts. Those are fun. I'm looking for the Mel's hole shirt because that's my favorite. There it is. Because speaking of Mel's hole, right? I mean, because Hecklefish said this in the episode. I went to Mel's hole and all I got was this magic seal fetus. Look, if you didn't watch the episode, I, that, that makes no sense. If you watch the episode, it still doesn't make sense. But still, it's a non sequitur. So how I said earlier that every that that the audience controls a lot of what happens on the channel. This this shirt was the idea. Uh, someone from the audience came up with the idea, and uh, and they sketched out the the design. I did the art on this one. I know Rob is concerned about 
it's not a competition, Rob, between you and me. Okay. It's not a competition. Your stuff is good. My stuff is clip art from freepick.com. <laughs> that's every there's a there's a role for everyone. So yeah, that's on shop at the files.com. Great way to support the channel. And I think you could still get you could still get the Hecklefish plush. So he now comes with a card with his his famous card, his name tag. He comes with that. Um, oh, don't be a sheep. <laughs> he's got 10 of his catchphrases, which were all, of course, recommended by the audience and everyone voted on them. Um, the teeth, he says they're real and they're harvested. They're they're very realistic. Very strange. What I say. And he comes with his own tinfoil hat. It's just it's not on this one. The tinfoil hat hecklefish is on is in the studio. So you can still you can get those on shop the black files .com. But the um I think the first the first batch is being made now. Well we now we now we gotta check now we gotta check. Instagram. OMG the Y if, if if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it's OMG the Y files. All right, so here is here's the factory. Just thousands of hecklefishes. I'm just glad there's not a lot of children in that video. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Because when, when they told me, hey, there's a video of the, of the hecklefish is being made, I was like, is it going to be okay? Are we okay? It's not like as bad as like Apple's factories, is it? They're like, no, 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 it's okay. It's, it's mostly mostly automated. So that's shopped at thewildfiles.com. Uh, covered Patreon and the Super Chats. Well, hang on a second. There's a team. Jennifer, how are you tonight? I'm good. Look at what we got in the mail today. I'm very excited to put up for the studio. Is it is? What is that? A gold balloon animal dog, and he's pooping a little balloon. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Uh, it would seem that I ordered myself a ticket to Kooky Town on the crazy train. I hope they have a cocktail car. So where did you get the pooping dog uh, balloon animal? What? Oh. And a face hugger. That's a face hugger? In a jar. Where, 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 where's all this? this Just reflecting off go. my screen. Anyway. We see it. We got it. Where are all these creepy tchotchkes going to live? Uh, just on random shelves around the studio. All right. Well, there's Victoria. How are you? I'm doing really well. Are you are you in the studio or are you home? I'm at the Airbnb. My home closes on Monday. Yay! All right. And you're officially here. Did you go into the office today? Uh, I was there at 7 o'clock. Pulling out whiteboards. That's what you did? Yeah, and I sawed off the the screws that were in them from the place <laughs> put them up now without specifics just a yes or no okay has there, has there been any discord drama this week always always okay um so uh, let me i'll leave you a little uh link in the chat there discord is a lot of fun most of the time uh and it's free to join so there's i don't know there's twenty thousand people in there now yes, over 20 Okay, so check that out, and it's a good way to get in touch with everybody. And there's Gina. Gina, did you change from your Cydonia to Mel's Hole? I did. You know, it's weird that the simulation, me and you wind up wearing the same shirt all the time. It, it seems like the last four weeks it, it was, so I, I switched it up so we weren't wearing the same shirt again. I noticed uh, when we did the Patreon AMA before the show that we were wearing the same. Yeah, but I, And I was surprised no one pointed it out in the Patreon. Well, you don't have to change. This isn't prom. You don't, you know. Don't go changing. Well, 
I, I want people to see the different choices they could get. You know, they should be uh, uh, going to, to, if they want something out, to, out of Mel's hole, this is the best thing to get. That's something to get out of Mel's hole. So Gino story, I was coming up tonight. What is a, you can give us a little tease, a little uh, broadcast yeah. tease. Well, tonight we're doing uh, uh, another alien out of West Virginia uh, who's wearing a very stylish outfit, like usual. I, I do. I'm. I'm uh, I feel like um, the fashion sense of aliens is not getting enough credit. <laughs> there you go. All right. And uh, Jen, did you work from this from the Wi Fi studio today? Oh, yes. What did you work on? Well, I worked on. Are you chewing a nicotine? Uh huh. I worked on the conference room and we worked on the Wi Fi studio room. And your couch was delivered. And worked on scripts. For upcoming episodes. All right. Well, do you guys want to look at uh, some weird videos? Yeah. Get your take at some weird videos? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have one. <laughs> I have one there. It's like, sh like alfalfa, like shooting up. Anyway. As far as live streams go, this one is, this one is terrible. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> I got two. All right, this I got a two-parter here. Oh. UFO one of two, two of two. Um, oh, by the way, I just need to acknowledge Daniel's funny joke there, getting spanked with the Van Allen belt. Nicely done. Well done, well done. All right, this is it. Oh. Here we go. All right, this is tech. This is Texas. Holy shit, Dalton. Are you seeing that? Dalton. Bro. Dalton, are you seeing this? <laughs> Bro, my heart just sank, dude. Man, did you just see that? Dude, I got all of that on video. The people's comments are my... You know, and I love when they freak out. Oh my God. I think this is the same guy or the same night or the same area. And people are saying in, in the thread that it's Starlink, but I don't, I don't think that's right. And they're moving in opposite directions. Satellites don't do that. Colorado kid thinks that's Venus. That looks kind of big for Venus, Colorado. Oh, that's that same thing with like the light in front of it. Like, what is that? I don't, I've never seen that. It's almost like it's got a spotlight. Kaiser Swift says, shoot them down. <laughs> I don't know, man. Secret Mission Man thinks it's swamp gas. Steve Blamp, that's a stage separation <laughs> at night. I know SpaceX yeah. did, did do a, a, a launch at night over California a few years back. Because there oh, was... Right. And that caused quite a stir, if I remember. I, think I, I mean, I seen it in the air and I didn't know what it was. I had to look it up right away. I mean... It was tremendous. It was tremendous in the air. Mm -hmm. All right. This one is Nevada, June 29th of this year. And if these are, if these are debunked, tell me in the chat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm still going to look at them because they're fun. But if, if they're debunked, tell me in the chat. Void Void Depp thinks it was Falcon Heavy the night. Don Clifford homemade drones. I don't know. They look pretty far up there. Clip City, first time here for a live. Hi. Glad you made it. 
All right, this was just a couple of days ago. Dom, are you seeing this? Bro, my heart is insane. Hear the sound? What? Can't be real, right? That's crazy. Is that real? Oh, Marion says this is CGI made by a guy on Instagram that they followed their profile or something. By alien info. Yeah, there's a jet chasing him. All right, we've got um, another sighting this week, UFOs over Great Pyramid, July 26th. <gasps> what is going on? Oh, my God. What is going on? Is <gasps> that sounds like a, a real reaction. I feel like it's looking at us. Why is it staring at us? <laughs> what? Oh, no. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know what that thing is. Look how quick it's moving. Oh my god, what is going on? Oh my god, it's coming apart. Whoa. What? How is she on them Why? I mean, this no. is crazy. You know, did you see this one this week? I did. Uh, I like the actual. Uh, you know, I just I want this one to be real. I just feel like at the pyramids you would wind up with a lot more angles. That's a good like point. A lot of people. Yeah. Oh That's my actual. There. there should be more. Oh my God, what else? That's, That's crazy. This one reminds me of that. <clears throat> Of course, my favorite UFO video of all time with the guy who's just screaming, they come in. It's an invasion. They come and shoot it down. I love that guy. I think this, I think this one was taken, um, believed to be authentic footage of a UFO stored at Area 51. What are your thoughts? Uh, uh, Akramathia Iluna Arcanta. Thank you for the kind words. Aaron G thought that last one was a drone show. It kind of acted like it. Yeah. Now, I don't, th this can't be real, right? Because I, everything that I hear, like from Mark McCandlish and others, is that there's no seams. Right. And in, like that, in the story last week, they said they opened and closed the doors and there were no seams uh, once the doors closed. If we are to believe the... Uh, you know, last week's dating story with the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, can't play that. No. <laughs> can't play that. <laughs> Joseph Walker thinks it's fake. Uh, 08AOC, when is the moon episode? Um, actually, the, the girls would know better than I would. The ladies, the women, the, I don't know what the, how to say it. It's fine. No. Because I I'm gotten I'm getting in a lot of trouble I'm I'm for my misogyny and my woman hating, and uh, I was I was told in a message that I need to be more introspective about how I feel about women. Oh my god! And it's clear, Jenny, from your face that you're yes. very offended by the things that I say and very upset by it. So offended! I'm so offended. But <sighs> comments like that, those are from younger people. Yes. You know, Gen, Gen X is just, we're just more chill. 
you know, you yes. have the greatest generation, right? World War II. Gen X is the funny generation, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's too serious. We don't get offended that easily. But yeah, if you're watch, if you're watching, I promise I'm not a, a woman hating misogynist. Oh, I, I want to say one thing about the people in the chat in the chats that got so upset about Timu being our sponsor. Hmm. Where do all of these people think that all the products on Amazon come from? I, I don't know. It, uh, that's why I was wondering. Like, <clears throat> I mean, Timu they did like a an investment round recently they're losing money to try to build the business is is the issue just that they're chinese i think so but like half the stuff that's on timu they just cut out the middleman like a lot of the stuff you buy on amazon they just buy from timu they just buy from china from drop shippers and then sell on amazon timu just cut it out like yep. and for uh, like a third the price um, I, I just uh, recently bought bought some um, LED lights on Amazon, and I found the same exact one so cheap on Timu. Once and they the picked them up as a sponsor, Heathen Asgard says, says it's China. Somebody yeah, said it, that it's like cheaper. You know, it's cheap stuff. Well, you know what? People like to buy cheap stuff. You know, I, I was having. Know. If it's on the site for three dollars and eighty-eight cents, it's you know it's not going to be solid gold. <laughs> but but I got USB speakers on there; they're good. And I, I don't want to turn this into a spot or yeah. defending them. When right. people were upset about Timo, I was like, oh no, I got to see what right. you know is what the drama is. I thought they were fine, and the drama is it's a Chinese company. You can't say that at the same time you're scrolling through TikTok, right? You can't be that guy. That you're anti-China while you scroll through TikTok looking at young girls dancing. Yep. You know, China. I had a uh, I had a uh, discussion last night in the Discord uh, voice chat about uh, um, simulation theory and NPCs and and how I, I one of the things that makes me feel like I'm in a simulation is there has to be NPCs running the world because China is pumping out so much manufacturing and who would live their whole life. 30 years, uh, you know, making little plastic things, little plastic bags or, or whatever. So, uh, you know, we got to support those NPCs sometimes that are, you know, making this world for us, you know, for us to live in. And someone's got to, someone's got to manufacture those bags that you get your weed in. I mean, it has to come from somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, this guy says, uh, I'm going to have to scroll so we're not, don't listen to his whole thing. So this is the shadow person. Shadow person. Oh. I was going to person, but I have to admit something clearly ran across this person's yard. I think I had the time code written down. 105. 105 for shadow person. All right. So just do Hey, Austin, Gino hasn't seen it yet. Just keep that's between us. Did you see it? Jen, did you see it? No. Watch, watch, you s watch that, watch, Let's go back one more, for all right, watch right from here. Oh, that was freaky looking. Did you see that? I did. Here it is again. Shadow person. Shadow person. Shadow people are scary. Do you want to? You want another scary one? Yeah. All right. This one comes from ba, 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 Mexican national TV. What? That looks like predator. Yeah. Looks like predator. Looks now. Lucy. 
It does. Now, I have to admit, when I saw this for the first time, I, I thought it was a, like like schmutz on, on the windshield. Uh-huh. Could it be water? Uh, it really just looks water on the windshield, says Marshall Smith. Oh. Draco, better than any horror movie. And a lot, some of these Draco, oh. they, they will like give me chills. I'll get spooked. Oh, it does maybe, maybe look like something on the windshield. Maybe. That's freaky. Uh, this one is... Have you guys seen the... Gino, did you see the woman on, on the bus in India with no face? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a creepy one. Uh, right, that they was... even call, I think they called the police on, on her. Uh... Oh, yeah. They did. So that's that's coming up. And he, this one is Ghost Glare. Arizona trucker shares footage of a chilling sighting. Well, this is a large Marge sighting. What? Whoa. Did you see it? There it was. I did. Here's a little replay. Large Marge. That, that's for the Gen Xers out there. Rest in peace, uh, Pee Wee. What? Pour one out for, for, for Paul Rubens. Got a bad rap. And Large Marge, it was a legitimate jump scare in that movie, was it not? Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and of course, that, that uh, effects doesn't hold up, but for the time, it was perfect. Perfect. Now, you see it looks like a ghost child standing on the side of the road. Do you see it? It does. Yeah. Fizz gig, RIP Paul. Eric, RIP Paul. Ro Rolo remembers Large Marge. Bubbles, see, this is the thing. Bubbles is saying, wasn't he a pedo? No. He got caught in a, he got ca caught in a porno theater. You know, that's the mistake. <laughs> That's so when that happened, you know, a zillion years ago, I hate to say it, but uh, that stuff doesn't really happen now. And it's not even that shocking. I mean, Jeffrey Tubin's doing it on the middle of a Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> Paul goes into where you're, that's supposed to happen. And, and so he's spotted in there and then that gets out. And then he's known for that. Did you guys see Blow? How great he was in Blow? Amazing part. What was his name in that? Derek? All right, this is the woman. Derek fucking for real. That's right. That's right. Derek for real. All right, the woman on the bus with no face. Uh, I will read this up. Viral in India of a bus driver who got freaked out after finding out that one of. All right, this is one, you know, and I don't want to, to be, to bully a creator, but. Sometimes there's, I hear voices that I can instantly in India, of, of a bus driver who got freaked out after finding out that one of his passengers was possibly a ghost or something else entirely. I'm going to show you guys two videos. This is the first. <laughs> In this first video, the bus driver asks the passenger to reveal her identity or face. Remember the ring wraiths? It's just like the hood. Yes. That's what... Oh, yes. 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 And as you can see, she appears to have no face at all. The bus driver then realizes he's possibly dealing with something else entirely, so he proceeds to call the police. <laughs> And upon their arrival, the woman had disappeared. However, the next day, after the next day, we've got a ghost. Um, I just want to t tell Veritas, who's saying hi, Pee Wee's Playhouse. The um, the general vibe of the of this channel is 
it was inspired by Pee Wee's Playhouse and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's 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 the energy that's here. After his shift, this happens. Look there. There's one. There's no conductor. But there is someone sitting there. और Maybe it's because I spent the last three days editing. I saw the cut. Did you guys see the cut? No. a video is going the 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 no face woman was was scarier to me mm-hmm this feels too contrived. Too contrived. Um, someone in the chat asking for an Admiral Bird episode. Uh, check Operation High Jump. That's basically an, an Admiral Bird episode. That's Go through his one. whole diary. That's I in the chat. Onset says, that's India, mate. Anything can happen there. <laughs> it goes down in India. Uh, Lisa thinks it's fake, fake, fake. Yeah, but it's still fun, Lisa. Most of the stories I do are fake. <laughs> All right, this is what happens if you attempt to breach uh, the Antarctic Treaty. Crew traveling too far south encountered. Is it? turning The turret's turning at us. That is a little one of them. Going that way. Just traversing. Is there a helicopter coming in? Just traveling, just go. Just go. Just go. That's a drone. Is it? Now, I don't feel like this one's free. Yeah. When people say, why the lie? One of the main answers is they're hiding more land. What if we can truly become... <laughs> I mean, if you actually get granted permission to go to Antarctica, you have to stay within this small area where the size of that continent is huge. Yeah, I think it's about the size of the US. It's bigger than Australia. So however long it takes you to drive across Australia, that's that's what we're talking about. Hmm. Yeah, I had a discussion with someone again on the Discord who was telling me um, how there's nothing in Antarctica because he's been there. And uh, I said, you've only been to the coast. You know, it's a whole, right. it's bigger than the United States. How, how could you say you've been there? Just because I've been to New York doesn't mean I've been to, to Los Angeles. Doesn't mean I've been to Louisiana, <laughs> you know? Right. It's like visiting Montana and saying the United States has no big buildings in it. <laughs> you know, I drove for miles and I just saw corn. So there's no skyscrapers there. Huh? <laughs> I mean, even if you're in the air, you're not going to see the whole thing. Is it time for a little giveaway and then we'll uh, get some Geno story hour? Yep. 
What is our what is our word? Sam squanch. Sam Sam squanch. That's a tricky one. Sam squanch. All right, so here's how it works. If you're new here, type Sam squanch in the chat, just how you see it. Just how it's spelled, and that's the only thing you put in the chat. And you're entered to win. What are they winning this week? They win a hecklefish plushie. Again? Hecklefish plushie. Oh, plushie. She's not rubbing feet right now. She, no. This is off season for foot rubs. It's off she, season for foot when rubs. When does foot rub season start? Like, I know it's it's it's, it's Christmas very, season, then pilot season, and then foot season. Yes, it's a very short window. Short window, probably end of March. Yeah. Well, writer's strike. There's no no pilot season anymore. Maybe we could extend the foot rubbing season. <laughs> oh, it's got I'm a right. Point there. I like Every it. Every other Thursday between Valentine's Day and Easter. That's foot rub season. There's Mr. Peckerwood. Thank you for the five dollars. Good episode tonight. One to get the imagination going just adds to my desire to visit more places and see things for myself. Hail Guppy Mamas. Hail to you, Mr. Peckerwood. <laughs> Mr. Peckwood, big supporter of the channel. Um, savvy, good beaver will not win. It's got to be Sam Squamsh. Adam Gunn says, wow, this channel is getting popular. Yeah, I don't know why either, Adam. Uh, BM is correcting the spelling. Look, I may have I may have typed it wrong. I don't I don't think I did, but I'm, even if I did, you have to type it wrong. But I mean, BN, with all due respect, you misspelled the word should. So I'm, that's maybe it's neither here nor there. I'm just saying we all slip, don't we? John Michaels, 25 bucks. <laughs> that's the good stuff. I love the Wi Fi wi family so much. Thank you for all your hard work. You're welcome. And thank you for uh, acknowledging it. I was beat. I was beat today, man. This one took a lot out of me. There's Lamont Cranston. Always good to see you, Lamont. As soon as my wife hears the waiting music, music on repeat, she runs into the room to see if you were doing your little shimmy dance. She loves it. I hope she's doing that shimmy dance for you, Lamont. I mean, my wife will dance on on command. So I, I think every wife should do that. Uh, you not maybe not command, but re if I uh, by request, but most of Jen's dances, they just happen. They're just spontaneous, and they happen a lot. A couple of times a day, she'll break out into some da dances. Sometimes there's that there's a lot of shoulders. Sometimes it's booty shake with hands on knees. You know what I'm talking about? Down there. There's booty shake. I like which to is, dance. It's, it's, there's not much booty there. It's just it's like it's just a flat board shaking. But still, I, it's 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 all about the effort. There is Brian Sincerbo for twenty five dollars. I interrupted a Hunger Games marathon for not, tonight's episode and live stream. Well, Brian, you're welcome. The odds were ever in your favor. Great episode tonight. Love this topic. Excellent work. Thanks, Brian. I didn't really get into those movies. That was that was Hunger Games. Was that like young adult fiction? Is that what that was? Yeah. Well, they open foot is not going to work. Um, sand squirts is funny, but that's wrong. Man squashed. No. Ham Sam squamps is wrong. Quite funny. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know who said it, but but Jennifer twerking, uh, that would she would definitely sprain something. She definitely would hurt her back <laughs> trying to trying to make it happen. I can't get it to. I can't it just do won't. It. it just won't jiggle right. It can't, I can't do it. Uh, you've been gifted in other ways. Yes. There is Shonen Fan Four. Interesting episode. Definitely look forward to the future Hollow Earth ones. Regarding the Cola Super Deep Borehole, I recommend checking out the movie Super Deep and entertaining sci-fi. It came across my search, uh, Shonen fan, when I was looking for stuff about Cola. So I definitely will check that out. 
there's a someone on YouTube went there very recently, which was interesting to see. Like the whole area is just, just fell, falling apart. It's just the whole building's falling apart. But it's really cool to see the cola super deep. Like the, the cover is it's still there with the date on it. There is Davina Weaver, $5. So last night I just learned about the Marfa Texas ghost lights. Have you heard anything about them? Um, the Marfa. No. Uh, well, I haven't heard about them yet. Is that is that uh, ghost, ghost lights? They're spook lights. So we spook are lights? going to. Yeah. So we'll talk about those. We have a spook lights episode coming up. Um, and we talk about Marfa. Everything all right? It was uh, Amazon. <laughs> but I didn't order anything to hear. Maybe they're just jealous that you're starting to use Timu. They want to win you back over. Trying to win me back from Timu. Third party sellers with your money. So Spook Lights is coming up, right? The episode on Spook yeah. Lights? Yeah. Yeah. Does that cover Marfa as well or no? It does. Okay. So there you go, Davina. All right. We are at 894 in the... Is that enough to draw or what? Um, I think she wants more. so. She wants more. Uh, John the Savage, $5. The earth is hollow, flat, and egg-shaped at the same time. Proven if you go to the old Tupperware headquarters. Yeah, I looked up crazy on Wikipedia, and guess what? This was on it. I don't get that. What am I? Am I missing something? The old Tupperware headquarters used to be shaped like a giant Tupperware. The building itself. But I'm going to look it up now. I'm looking it up right now. Um... Yeah, I don't get it. Well, John the Savage, you stumped us. You did. So kudos, so kudos there. There's Patrick Duncan just sharing the love. I always appreciate that, Patrick. Patrick, always very generous with the channel. And thanks to everyone who's super chatting. Um, I see you in the in the list. I will definitely will get to you tonight. I appreciate the support. Dr. TBK, Flat Earth episode one day. I can't do it because uh, YouTube w would start looking at the channel as conspiracy misinformation. But uh, but Hecklefish has expressed his thoughts. We, we almost got into, into the firmament this week, but it just wasn't enough to get into it with this episode. But one guy has a very interesting theory I watched. I guess it's a, you'd call it a symposium. I watched him give a lecture on it. And the lecture was how we, on the surface, are living in the hollow earth. And it was, it was kind of interesting. It's all about the firmament. Huh. So I would like to cover that, but it's hard to, to wiggle that one through the algorithm. Appreciate that, Patrick. Yeah, There's well, Eric Stitz. I know a nice, funniest moment was when Hecklefish revealed himself to be a flurf. Oh, what's a what's a flurf? I think is is it a flat earther? Oh, he's a flat earth flat earth fan. Flat earth. Did you talk about the flat earth? Flurf. Verb verb to flurf. While a flurf is a flurf is a flat earther. Flurfing is a verb defined as infiltrating flat earther communities and planting ridiculous evidence. <laughs> That's Urban Dictionary, like Richard Doty did. Uh, Smurf's cousins won't work, Don. It's not going to work. Uh, Spanky Sam's Sam's crotch will not work. I didn't hear the Three Amigos uh, thing in the ad today. You did. You caught that. I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Well, the uh, the Bigfoot mating call was actually the Three Amigos. Gino remembers that. Oh, okay. 
Gotcha. Steve Martin is trying to get Martin Short and Chevy Chase their attention, and so he's like, "Woo, woo!" And that, and they just they're so he's like, "Hey, hey!" <laughs> Someone out there remembers. Look up here. Look up here. Well, that's funny. Spam crotch will not work. <laughs> Sounds tasty. Spam crotch. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Jennifer likes that one. She likes Spam Crotch. Uh, Spiral no. Mine, Denver Airport is an entrance to Hollow Earth. Yeah, that, that's on the list. I couldn't do them all. There's a lot of them. But Denver Airport was definitely on that list. All right, we are... Uh, Ooh, we're over a thousand. Yeah. We're ready, ready to draw? Draw it up. Draw it up. All right, here they go. There's Frosty. There's Tin, Antoinette, Jordan, Bosco, Antonio, Casey, Zia, Will, Hello, Carol, Closer, Brandon, Mix, RC, Devil, Fox, Pamela, Strand. Woo! Pamela Strand is the winner. Rev68, you saw your name? That is exciting when you see that. All right, so Pamela Strand, what does she have to do to get the foot rub? She comes to Discord, puts in a ticket, and gives us her information. Now, do they have to give you their shoe size or? No. Okay. So you, no, no shoe size necessary. No, no. But if you have a hammer toe, you may want to let Victoria know that in advance, just out of a courtesy, out of courtesy. Whoa. Robert Cox, $49.99. Won't. Won't you tip me? You know I don't believe you when you say you don't got money. Won't. Won't you tip me? You know I can't believe it when you say that I'm not funny. I write too many jokes just to amuse you folks. You better super chat me or I'll just keep singing. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Robert Cox, just a couple of shekels right into the till. We appreciate that. Severus, um, I have to look over here now. This computer is this computer is definitely sick. This the the main one, the camera and the mic and all that. But I, this is working over here. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Severus is there four ninety nine. Can you name a few that you do believe? So, um, Hollow Moon. It's hard hardcore believe Severus. It's hard to say, but stories that have changed have got me thinking a different way is Hollow Moon. The um, I actually started thinking about the Mothman a little bit differently because of all the, not not the ones in in Point Pleasant in West Virginia, but all the sightings in Chicago. There's a lot of sightings in Chicago. Uh, what else? Do you guys remember any that were kind of made us go? Well, huh. you say you don't believe in ghosts, but you did see a shadow person. I I did, but is that I don't think that's a ghost. Well, no, I mean, it's an entity of some sort. Well, if it is, if it is an entity, it was definitely the scariest thing that I ever experienced, probably ever. But it, but I, but I, that didn't convince me that it's an actual entity. I'm, I still feel like that's a manifestation of, of some type of psychological issue or stress or something like that. But I could be wrong because the hag, which is that what I saw. That is one that people see. Yeah. Like the hat man is one that people see. Right. I just think of simulation. I know you don't like it, but no. No. Yeah, I, uh, simulation. But I went into that one already kind of leaning that way. Uh, Kelton Tucker says Nephilim. Yeah, I started thinking about giants a little differently. That was Nephilim. one that you said. Oh, yeah. You thought it was ridiculous, and then you started working on it. And you're like, there were definitely giants. <laughs> Yeah, they existed. 
something something happened there. Uh, Tommy Barnes says the Van Halen belts hold it all together. Somebody said we need to do a t-shirt that just says swimming here. I got guppy payments up the wazoo. Sorry, I, we had to go to a little Halen. What were you saying? Somebody said we need to do a t-shirt that just says really fast, far apart. <laughs> yep, someone someone left it was on Twitter the other day, said it was very funny. Because yeah, your your last description was just this. <laughs> yeah. Halen belts. <laughs> there is Sunny A for 20 bucks. That's what I'm talking about. If you need a guy in the street for the LA Lizard People episode, I'll endure the soul sucking drive to get you pics, updated references. I appreciate that, Sunny. We're close enough that we can get there. But um, the. The only one entrance that we can get to that I'm aware of that's still there, you can't really get there. And even if you could, you probably wa probably wouldn't want to right. in LA these days. Uh, but I appreciate that, Sonny. I'm always looking for, for people to get out and do some field research. Yeah. You're Dave Hoffner for $20. Awesome episode. Three for three for me. And it definitely has filled my Thursday slot forever. I appreciate that, Dave. So three for three, does that mean Dave's seen three episodes and he liked them? <laughs> exactly. On the streak. What's Victoria laughing about? He's on a streak. Oh, he's on a streak. Three for three is a streak. Uh, well, we're 90 minutes in. You know what that means. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the regular scenes. Worldwide travel feed with the cream. Jack Perry, he's the bone who bears. Big bush change smell. Fall the air. Hey, hippity doppity doppity do. Where's Gino? Yeah, that's who. And yeah, it's true. Cause that's a dude. He cares a fuck. He drinks around the pops and the souls up. So Gino, do I have to um do I keep these images hidden for now? Oh, are you dressing me? I thought I was Mr. Poopy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh you don't have to put those images up just yet. But if you enjoy Gino's story time, uh please go to kidmancoffeeco.com and use the promo code Wildfiles. Do yourself some Java 51. Uh, they are um, ready to ship pretty soon. I think they're going out uh, in the next week. So nice. today's story hour, uh, we're going to talk about the green monster of the Flatwoods or the Flatwoods monster. Flatwoods monster um, is a story, uh, again, that is unsure if we're talking about a cryptid or an alien. But it starts out in Appalachia. Um, in September of uh, 1952. So again, this is an er early sighting. Uh, there's two brothers, uh, Eddie and Freddie May, who are out playing on the uh, uh, playground of their local school with two of their buddies, uh, throwing the football around. And they see in the sky uh, a, a huge streak that lights up the sky. So of course, um, a, a, they see it and it looks like it crash lands on on the farm next door, uh, uh, owned by a guy named G. Bailey Fisher. So kids being kids, they think they see a UFO. So they run home to tell their mom, uh, you know, that, hey, there's a UFO over there. Let's go check it out. You know, hey, mom, there's a UFO crash at old man Fisher's farm. Let's get over there. So the mom, you know, knows kids being kids. It's probably not a, a UFO, but, you know, God forbid it's an airplane crash and someone needs help or something. So she gets gets the kids together, grabs the dog, uh, Richie, and then goes uh, down to the neighbor's house where uh, uh, this kid, Eugene, he's a 17 year old, uh, and asks that, him to come with, with, with them. Now, Eugene has just recently gone into the National Guard. So, you know, he comes equipped with a flashlight. So he's the leader of the crew here. So they're uh, going down checking out, out the farm and there, it's about a quarter mile down. So they're trekking their search party uh, down the way and they could see that there's like a burning 
uh, like a burning uh, a sphere on the hill, like a, a round circle uh, uh, that's that's flamed up. So as they're, they're looking at, at this burning, they are overcome with this mist uh, uh, and the smell of uh, a, a burning sulfur type of uh, plastic. Um, so if uh, this, this is everyone gather around a campfire or that's my burning UFO. Uh, so <laughs> so, um, so they see, see the burning circle and then and they are overcome with this, this mist. And you know what, what that means. You don't want that space smoke. Every time that space smoke shows up, it doesn't turn out good for everyone. So they see two glowing red lights uh, off to the left uh, above this uh, burning circle. And uh, uh, Eugene, uh, you know, the, the uh, military man's Johnny on the spot with the flashlight, uh, flashes uh, over to it and they see the craziest animal or creature that they've ever seen in their life. It is a 10 foot tall, you can put up the pictures now if you'd like. It's 10 feet tall. It has a glowing red face and green skin and its head is like in the shape of a uh, spade. They uh, said like you would see in a deck of cards. And uh, um, besides that, it has these uh, spindly arms that come to little little claws. Um, and uh, uh, and the dog sees it, and he's out of there. The dog is no help. So they brought this dog along. Uh, it is not a um, guard dog for sure. Um, so now they're looking at this thing. They're all scared. They're screaming. They start, start, uh, booking it back to the house. Um, and once they get back to the house, they do, you know, they call the police. So, uh, Mrs. May calls the police and she does what any other, uh, person would do. She also calls a news reporter. So the police and a news reporter show up at the same time, uh, and they're starting to do their investigation. Now, while they're doing their investigation, they can't find any, they don't see the Flatwoods monster. But what they do find is there is this mist with this overwhelming smell that's, that's lingering uh, on, on the property. Uh, they find some tracks and some oily substance, uh, but they can't really find anything else. So not much evidence there. But they did have to bring four of the people who are on this uh, search party to the hospital uh, because they were having those overwhelming effects. Their eyes were burning. Uh, I, I mean, they, they felt like their skin was burning. Their eyes were watering. Um, and they were hospitalized. And the doctors said uh, they had the same uh, symptoms as if they were dealing with the symptoms of mustard gas, which is in, an interesting tidbit huh. in, in the whole thing. So uh, not, not much evidence there. Then the next day, uh, there was another sighting of, about 20 miles north in a place called, um, uh, let's see where my notes are, Heaters, West Virginia. So uh, uh, in Heaters, West Virginia, there was a woman named Audra who she uh, came across what she thought was the same creature. While she was walking home from the store with her and her, her buddy, they took a shortcut through the woods. Now, also, it's never a good idea. Don't take the shortcut through the woods. What are you doing? So they take the, the uh, shortcut through the woods and um, and they see this creature that uh, they describe the same exact way uh, that's uh, 10 feet tall, has these small spindling arms. And the one thing I forgot to mention is how it was dressed. It had this long, flowy skirt on. And um, this with this uh, like a like a metallic skirt. Uh, also, the original party mentioned it made a hissing noise, and that's what scared them the most, and started floating towards them. That's why they booked it back to the house, because it, it was coming right at them. And, you know, they didn't come out with any guns. I don't know what they're thinking. You don't go searching for aliens without guns. Um, so, so Audra and her friend, they see this thing 10 feet tall in the woods coming at them. They book it out of there as well. Now, the only difference uh, with them is they didn't think that um, it had the spaded head. What they saw was something a little bit different, but it was so dark they couldn't really describe it. So that goes on record. The very next day, there's another uh, couple who are going sightseeing uh, with their toddler, and they're driving through, through uh, West Virginia, and all of a sudden, their car breaks down, just shuts off. 
So they're trying to figure out what's going on. They're turning the key. It's not going on. And all of a sudden, the space smoke rolls in. So mm. they start getting coughing and getting sick from, from the sulfur smell. And they're looking around to see what's causing this. The baby's going nuts in the back. Um, and, uh, and they see on the side of the road coming at them is the Flatwoods Monster. And again, they describe it the same way, only again, it didn't have the helmet on this time or, or the spaded head, uh, but they could see the bright glowing red and orange eyes. And it took its hand and put it on top of the, uh, 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 on top of the car. It dragged its lizard-like claw across their car. And uh, of course, he hits the horn, he's scared. All of a sudden, it's gone. It just takes off. Now, as soon as it takes off, they're able to start the car again, and they're ready to, to book it on out of there. Um, but they say for a mile, they're just overcome with that space mist. So, of course, all this kind of catches catches fire in the news. The reporter was there that night. Um, he starts uh, reporting on it. Um, and one of the things that uh, he reports on, um, uh, his name was Barker. Uh, I forgot forgot his first name. Uh, so he's um, uh, writing in the, the the article about it. And on the third um, sighting, they said it wasn't didn't have a spaded head. It had a reptilian bony bony face. So lizard people, maybe that's what we're we're talking about. And um, uh, but it got uh, so much press that it got a whole bunch of different names. One was. Uh, uh, the green monster, uh, the green uh, monster of the Flatwoods, the Flatwoods monster, uh, uh, the uh, Braxton County monster, uh, and a very cute uh, name, uh, also Braxy is what, what they called it. <laughs> so this guy writes these articles, and then two weeks later, he gets uh, visited by two men in black. Now, he describes them as them saying that they're uh, they work for a magazine and they're doing an article and they need to know all the information on, on that. As he's talking to them, he quickly realizes that they're not referring to each other by name. They're only return, referring to each other by number, which is strange. And of course, he doesn't believe that they work for a, a magazine. However, at the end, they get, they threatened them and they said, uh, now that, that uh, you know, we talk, don't write anything else about this um, creature and and then uh take off so again he felt like um he felt really intimidated by them but he did go on to become a big ufo writer so i guess he wasn't that that scared <laughs> and um so that's the story of the flatwoods monster uh again there are are a few sightings that and they slightly differ in and how they looked especially with the spade spade head um but uh all three of those sightings happened in west virginia and um, I, I think that that is one of the um, most recognized uh, cryptids. And again, uh, uh, it seems like all of these creatures are, are dressed in really uh, interesting garb. For it to have a flowing metallic skirt, uh, I think that's the only time I ever heard about, about that. Again, I, I'm not going to try and guess the alien's gender. I couldn't even do that down here. I'm not going to. No, 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 no. To no, figure no, out no, that can of worms. <laughs> but you know, very stylish in, in their outfits. And uh and I appreciate that. Yeah, that's crazy. That one looks like a cat. The one drawing that you show looks like a cat in a hood. And that drawing that you're showing right now was drawn by our own SMK. That's right. Uh so if you go over to uh go keep scrolling through those pictures. Uh, there was one picture that, uh, so that's the main picture of uh, what, what it was uh, described as originally. That was one of the original pictures. Um, if you go one more picture over, uh, uh, no, keep going. Yeah, it looks like a cat. Yeah, that looks a little like a cat. Oh, so, so the biggest uh, theory is that this was an owl. And I don't know how many owls uh, people have seen, especially in these backwoods, but uh, the, you know the difference between a 10-foot owl and, a, I, I mean, a barn owl is is a, a foot at, at most, you know? 
so to think that these things are owls uh, is uh, really um, pushing what I mean, how does an owl land on a car and put its hand on a car and you think it's an owl? It's just, it, it's, it's too much. Well, like with the I Kentucky Goblins seen. that they thought they were owls as well. Right. But, uh, you know, the, the, the chat is, likes the story. They're only slightly disappointed that there wasn't as much sex in this one as last week. Well, uh, you never know uh, uh, what happened be, be, uh, uh, behind the scenes. That was a couple uh, going for a stroll in their car and, and um you know maybe they're looking for lovers lane now this is an interesting picture because it does look like that they have melt holes seal fetus hanging out above them they Ooh. do look at that but uh, what i think is this picture is they're trying to say it's an owl I, you know i have not seen a lot of owls in metallic skirts they're, just yeah they're just not that fashionable right where did uh, this take place? Uh, West Virginia, Flatwoods, West Virginia. All, all kinds of stuff going on in West Virginia. West Virginia. That looks hey. like uh, it, they all look like the flying nun. I thought of a nun too. I was like, they look like my teachers in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, yeah. again, I'll, I'll say this. Here's another story where it never hurts anyone. You know, we're always tr trying to, to, to blast these things. Never hurts. It. These things never hurt anyone. Yeah, that's what But why we were talking about that last week on the live stream when I was saying everybody's so worried about aliens. But, you know, we've been hearing about them for hundreds and hundreds of years. So you think if they're going to do something bad, they would have done it before now. You know, uh, one of the things you said before when, uh, before we were on, AJ, you, you mentioned how the UFOs seem to crash a lot. And um, uh, if, they had, if they have this technology, how come they, they can't fly these things and they crash? Well, uh, consider, consider how we have technology to go under the water, but we're still imploding and uh, things, are, things are going missing. So if these things are living in our ocean, maybe they're having the opposite effect. They, hey, you know, they're sending up their billionaires and, you know, some of them land in Roswell. There you go. <laughs> right there. Wow. Well, uh, Jenny, I'm going to do a reboot here because this computer's dying. Do you want to do a couple of super chats while I, sure. while I do that? I absolutely will. Could uh, now okay great here we go. Ke Kevin Scatter good for fifty dollars. Whoa, thank you, Kevin. Look at your cute little boy uh, outside staring at Janet Airlines flyby. Should I go visit the gr groom? Gr groom? I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, Kevin, but. I would be interested to see some pictures of Janet Airlines. That's crazy. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, um, we've got a video, an early video about Janet Airlines. And it's a, it's an airline that flies every day uh, to Area 51. Mm -hmm. Every day, back and forth. It's a really crazy story. Severest for four ninety nine. Oh, we we did that one. He did name a few. He believed Severest. Thank you. Um, let's see. Dave Hoffner for twenty dollars. We see. This is why I got to do this. Um, Cameron D for ten of those. Hi, is that postal address in the about page you wanted to send fan mail to? It absolutely is. That would be great. Oh, look at your cute little crab cat avatar. That's oh, awesome. I love that. Cheers and cheers to you too, Cameron. Thank you. Redhead. Hey, Redhead for $10. Another great episode. Can't wait to see the new studio. We're so excited. We're so excited. Every day, Victoria and I just walk around going, oh my God, it's so cool. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Thank you. Uh, for our drums, the official drum channel of the Y, y Files for $20. Thank you for all you guys do. Always learning something true. Yes, it's true, man. 
earth may be hollow like an empty pork and bean can, or earth may be filled with a Tootsie Roll center during winter. You never know. You never know. Uh, it's super interesting. Like, we can't even comprehend. I, it, I think during the episode he said the cola, like, deep hole was, I'm not sure how far down they went. Oh, uh, 40, 40 miles, something like that. But it's like 4,000 miles. So we have no clue, just like we have no clue what's really at the bottom of the ocean. So uh, it's just, it, it's fascinating. It's very fascinating. We're going to learn a lot of stuff coming up soon, I think. You know what I'm interested in? So we have ocean underneath the ocean. Is that salt water also, or is it fresh water trapped in those rocks? That's a good question. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure we could probably find that out pretty quickly. Uh, Google we'll it. Take a trip. Yeah, we'll take a trip. We'll just go <laughs> down there and see. And Lamont Cranston says whale crap is at the bottom of the ocean. Yes, and whale crap, well, no, it's not whale crap, it's whale vomit that is very uh, highly coveted. It's very expensive. It's called ambergris, and they use it, uh, in, is it perfume or they use it in, yeah. Perfumes, yeah. They use it in perfumes. It's worth so more apparently, than, than diamonds, worth more than gold per, per ounce. Yeah, it, it comes up, it, it big rocks, big chunks. So there you go, learn something new every day. Um, or maybe you don't, maybe you all knew that, but there you go. All right, Jordan for $20 Canadian. Uh, thoughts on transcension hypothesis? Maybe we haven't found aliens because exploring outer space is primitive, so aliens would instead explore inner space by making themselves smaller and smaller until they escape space time. That sounds like the quantum realm in uh, Ant-Man. I don't know. That's interesting. It's, you know, it's an interesting thought experiment. Um, yeah. But then why are we seeing them? Like, we've been seeing aliens for quite some time. So maybe those are just the... The, the, the aliens are just slumming when they're, <laughs> when they're coming to Earth to check us out to see what we're doing it's like we're like a vacation for them be interesting Are do we back? get i'm back do we get um you hear me okay right yes nice. do we get john do we get jonathan's big super chat in there Not yet i was waiting for you jonathan dissinger 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 for 100 bucks i get pretty freaky He's a super freak, the kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak, but only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. I need a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. And you. And you, human. You and you and you. Hit the, hit the, hit the. Hit the super chat, super chat, hit the button now. AJ, I found your channel last week and now I've watched every single video you've posted. I'd love to know which topic of all the topics you've researched and done videos on that you were most skeptical on but now feel is very likely to be true. Thank you for all the amazing content. That's going to be a hollow moon, Jonathan. That when I started researching thinking it was a stupid theory and I ended up, I'm pretty, pretty convinced. Uh, Gina, where are you on the, on the moon being hollow? Well, I'm sure of it. So, I mean, besides it just being hollow, I believe it was placed there. Um, I mean, hang on back up because I like this when, when people support a theory. You're sure of it? I'm absolutely sure. I mean, even NASA, uh, again, the, we put this in, in our video. Uh, NASA noticed that it rang when they landed one time. So they said, you know what? We're going to go find out what's going on. And they sent some uh, seismographs up there and they dropped a weight on it and it rang for four hours or something crazy like that hours um and the only way for that to happen geologically is if it's hollow so um that, that gina's talking about a seismic detonation device that they they set they 
it it the moon rang like a bell for hours and then they sent up a bigger explosion and it rang all day so and what was strange about the seismic waves the seismic waves when they hit denser material they slow down but in the moon once they got past the surface those waves sped up so our moon is tidally locked correct we're, we're, even though it, we only see different phases because of where the sun is, we're still seeing the same side, which is facing the earth at all times, right? Yep. So, so how are we getting so many craters on the moon? If it's always facing us and the meteors are shooting, don't they have to be shooting past us to hit that moon on the surface that we can see? Because if we're here and where, where are these coming from that they're able to always hit and make craters that way. It seems like a small little, uh, you know, place they got to get through. What? He brings up a point. That's a point. I like That's it. Point. Um, well, they could be hitting obliquely, but also the moon is pretty far away. So, the, so your angle of attack doesn't need to be so steep. And they're, and they're all circles? How, how, come, how come they're not well, it's, steep different? But what's, but what's very strange is the far side has fewer impact craters. Mm -hmm. Now, how could that even be? It's like the aliens or whatever were like, you know what? This side is all jacked up. Let's spin it around. <laughs> and and by the way, one of our Discord members is is who sent that to me uh, today to talk about how how uh, the craters are all circles, um, and that and that's also strange. Why why are they so circular? And they and they the impact craters always seem to go down to the same depth and stop, whether it's a a, a small impact or a giant one. There's well, a lot of weird stuff. So, but if the moon is locked by our gravitational pull, I think it would make sense if if objects were approaching it, even from the backside, that it would get pulled into our orbit and then slingshot around and hit the front, right? Oh, we would have no, but how could it, it not? Work. Like if why would it not get get caught in the gravitational pull of the Earth as well? If 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 an object gets caught by Earth's gravity, it usually gets pulled into the atmosphere rather than be rather than slingshot around because it's just not to for it to be, be get caught. It's got to be small. For it to slingshot, it's got to be pretty big or pretty far. Yeah, but I mean, if it was that big, we, you know, we always hear NASA say things like, I mean, and I know NASA, but, you know, we always get these notifications. Oh, this meteor the size of a bus is going to fly within 120,000 miles of, you know, the Earth. So I feel like if it, they were bigger, they'd see, we'd see them. Right. There's Michael Miller for fifty dollars. Appreciate the support, supporting the chat. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what you want. Do you want to get into into it, Jennifer? No. Or we can get into it. No. We can get into it. No, I'm done talking about it now. There's Paul for five dollars. There's another whale. Thousand dollars a month. You know, there's a saying in the in the ocean. It's always a bigger fish. There's the mama down under. Holy mackerel! You see what I did there? Thanks for dropping a couple of shekels on me, human. <laughs> G'day, and thanks for an intriguing topic. AJ Gino, Victoria, Jen, and Hecklefish. Did I notice one of the ley lines pinpoint Pine Gap in Australia? A secret of underground U.S. military base. I did not see that. But we can check that. Oh, look at that. Shop at thewifiles.com. That's a great way to support the channel. If you want to pick up a Hecklefish t-shirt, Hecklefish coffee mugs, are our mugs fully fistable now? Yes. Fully fistable. All right. Uh, let's get a ley line map. Processing. 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 You see, Jennifer, I need a new streaming set up here. Can you tell? I know. Didn't we just get you one to set up yep. at the studio? Awesome. There it is. 
All right, now let's get one. It's processing. Processing. <laughs> do, 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 do. That was a long wait for that. All right. I don't know if this is. Oh, you got. I got to share. Um, is this Pine Gap? Don't know. You could look it up. It'll take you ten hours. It'll take ten hours. See, that's fine. Huh. Could it be? We see this, right? Yeah, close. Could be. Yeah. Heathen of Asgard. AJ using AOL dial up over there. <laughs> You've got mail. You've yeah, got I'm, mail. I'm working. I'm using some janky gear here, Asgard. It's why usually I can contain myself losing my temper and patience, but not always. <laughs> not always. Do, 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 do. All right, Mama from Dan Under. I, I I don't know if that answered your question, but you could be right. That would make sense. Electric Cheap was there for five dollars. I tried remote viewing tonight's after files from live on set. Somehow ended up at Geno's. And well, there's just some things you just you can't unsee. You don't want to actually project to Geno's. No. You gotta you gotta call ahead before you do that. Make sure you bring a J if you're coming over. I mean. <laughs> Blank canvas life wanderers for ten dollars. I think we need some Wi-Fi's bourbon. Smoke wagon is local in Vegas. Maybe a Wi-Fi's barrel pick. Gino, make it happen. We're on it. We're on it. Can I tell them what it is? Yeah. I can tell, right. Yeah. So we're working. We're looking for a partner. We've got it narrowed down to two or three to manufacture for us custom uh, crab cat whiskey. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bourbon bourbon whiskey, and uh, and we're gonna go there and and pick our own blend. So that's gonna be crab cat whiskey. So blank canvas, head in the right place. I gotta get a nicotine tablet in there. There's Robert. Pre 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 it's hard to say his name with the nick. Hang on. But you gotta you gotta get it. Get the get grit off your teeth. Yeah. I wish I could have found your channel sooner. Me too, Robert. Where where were you two years ago when I needed you? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, great episode, and I'm happy for your success. Now, don't go anywhere. Thank you. I appreciate the support, Robert. Overnight success. Oh, two and a half years overnight. Yeah, but in the grand scheme of things, for people that it's it was yes, it was yes. it was pretty fast. But but I've been consistent. It helps. Yes. But um. We're still not even, oh, we are. We just passed one year anniversary. So one year ago, not 10 years ago, one year ago, I was still working full time. Yep. We, yep. I wasn't doing the channel full time. So that's, that's not that long ago. And tonight's it, video is ranking one of 10. It Woo! is? It is. Um, I, I didn't turn the monetization on. I did. did. <laughs> she got it. And I had the tab open. Thank God for Jenny. <laughs> Zeb, the super Fran, uh, Superman Francis, 999. Well, hey, why, fam? AJ, love the Game of Thrones reference in the commercial. Quick question. What was the Game of Thrones reference in the commercial? Oh, my sweet summer human. Ah. Oh, who wrote that? <laughs> Are you indicating yourself with those skinny, bony, skeletal, gendigo fingers? I am. Okay. I am. Um, yeah, Jen does the first draft of all the commercials. 
All I yep. do is add jokes. More jokes. More, I add more funny jokes. More. I add. I. I. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the help. Do you have another commercial you need to write? I have lots that I need to write. Um, we could ask the chat if there's a if there's a situation or premise you'd like to see Hecklefish get himself into or out of oh, yeah. in the next commercial. Let us know in the chat. I'm watching it now. Yes, please. Maury says AJ looks like Jimmy Dore's long lost brother. What does Jimmy Dore look like? I guess I guess I could see it. We like Jimmy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. A uh, quick question: Why are the lady folk afraid to flatulate? We know they get flatulent, yet most seem afraid to just fart. P.S. Sorry, I'm late. After files. You want to handle that one, Jennifer? You want to discuss? Uh, well, Zeb, it's just you know, it's it just doesn't seem very ladylike. It doesn't seem very attractive. So, you know. But in the alien world, uh, you don't know because there's always some kind of mist. And certainly we coming out of that metal skirt tonight. Um, who knows what that mist was? Right. But when Jen and I eat ice cream, <laughs> well, you fill in the rest. You fill in the rest. Who's practicing trombone in my my boudoir? Is there a duck in here? What is going on? Who was that? There's the trash man for ten dollars. Prison Planet theory later this year. I I think we that's in the list. I think. It is. What am I thinking about depressing theories that they may have some based info depending on where you look? Yeah, I think that's on the list, right? Solar recycler. Yep. Oh, is that the same story? Yeah. There's a uh, psycho CPU, $5. Did you see the architect that found 12,000 year old ruins with a pyramid underwater off the coast of St. Bethlehem Parish? Same ley line as Giza. Hmm. I did not see that. Hmm. Stuff seems to happen on those ley lines. Uh, Curdy CT thinks that's an alien queef. Is Jennifer laughing? How dare you? That just encourages bad. What is the matter with you? It just encourages <laughs> bad behavior. <sighs> now we need like a squeezy alien for the office that that queefs. <laughs> you assume we don't have. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. Angie11s says, uh, hello, everyone. Everyone farts. But some. Well, yes. Some farts You'd are louder. You'd explode if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Internal combustion. That's right. That's probably how people spontaneously combust. That's it. That's right. Starting small. <laughs> Tell us the highlight of your day, please. Oh. Yeah, probably the first time I talked to Jenny. Uh, getting approval from the sponsor, which they had to do because there was no way to. Yeah. Like if they're like, oh, can you fix this? Nope. No. No. <laughs> so there's Johnny Shabazz for 20 Canadian. Uh, 20 Quatloos for you to spill your Reddit grievances for therapy. Well, thanks, Johnny. I hope I didn't get too much into that. Brillo crash site landing pad. Your balanced approach is appreciated. Well, I, I, his, his avatar, what's happening? Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. That's Do they make a, a, cre a cream for that? It's, a, it's like a creepy, it looks like a creepy ventriloquist dummy. Well, no, I mean, that's, it could really be his face. So be careful. Don't, he could well, have some. Well, unless cream. the bottom part of his mouth is attached by a hinge on his neck, I don't think that's really his face. I don't want to assume his mouth, however you and do if it. if it is, Brillo, I'm sorry. That had to have been a terrible accident. 
was a hell of an accident. Uh, there's Bex runs amok. Uh, Beth A says F the haters. I'm in Beth. Bex, Bex, that's Bex. There's Vincent. Why do you think the military was fighting in Antarctica in 47? I don't know if they were fighting down there, but um, but the Operation High Jump was a pretty big task force to send down there, 46, 47, and it was heavily armed uh, with some of the first helicopters that the military ever used. So they say they were down there to uh, investigate the weather phenomena and such. Uh, but if you watch the episode, I won't spoil it, Vincent. But um, but I do explain why that I explain that that was a cover story and, what, and the real reason they were down there. That is in the episode. Jive Cat, the magnificent, ten pound. Did you check out the book Edorpha? It's about the inner Earth Freemasons and ascended masters. It's also kind of psychedelic. Love today's episode. Um, I think Edorpha is on the list as well. It is. That's a wacky story. Um, if you're scratching your head in the chat, that's Aphrodite spelled backwards. There is Halston Holt. Yes, wiggle it just a little bit. I say wiggle it. Thanks for the tip, human. Uh, what it do from PNW, my GF Kimchi, and I love you and Hecklefish's work. Keep doing you. Don't change anything. Can you please do an episode on the Tartarian Empire and their architecture being systematically destroyed? Yeah, that's coming. That's a that's a, a pretty new urban legend. Um, you know, I watched a great video today on someone who had a book from uh, 1893, I believe, and he's showing all the pictures of the architecture, which is just amazing. So much uh, more intricate than anything we have today, and and mostly destroyed, like um, with the World's Fair and stuff. That so that's that's the that's the prime time for Tartarian Empire is the late. 19th century or so right yeah and i i think a big part of it is all the buildings had these mercury bubbles on the top of them so there's a, a lot of uh, the theory of course is that there was electric before edison um and that's that that was one of the things wiped out in the his in our history yep that episode's coming up there's Arc Punk Comics, 999. Jesse and Ori are here. There they are. Thank you for the connective tissue between the different underground myths. Hollow Earth slash Moon is one of our favorites. Mine too. Something to it. Our comic hits on this too. Love you guys. All right. Arc Punk, Punk Comics. That was, they were the ones that before that they were uh, Accu Rocks Radio or whatever that we could never pronounce. Oh, that's right. They had that, that, that crazy name. There's nice. Arc Punk Comics. Kind of ah. looks like the thing from tonight, right? It does. The onion head. Onion head. Yeah, it looks like like a uh, spade piece of garlic. Garlic clove. The garlic alien. Garlic alien Axie faction five dollars. Seen every video. Love your content. I've seen every video as well. But it's not a competition. Love your context. Best work ethic are inspiring. Heart, heart, heart. Thanks, Axie, for the support. And thank everyone for super chatting tonight. It really helps the channel. Here's Jennifer Lynn for $10. Boom goes the dynamite. Thank you, human. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you for everything you do. Great storyteller. I appreciate the entire team. But for reasons unknown, Jen is my favorite. Well, I'm a Jennifer Lynn as well, so. Oh, did we lose her? Oh. <laughs> Something happened. Sorry. Wait. Uh, would, can now that you've done that, can, for, for the chat, can you do your impression of me? <laughs> Go ahead. Can you, chat, can you do your impression of me? <laughs> That's one, and now what's the other one? I don't remember them all. It's mostly when you irritate me. <laughs> this one. 
That one? Yep. I hear that a lot in my house. Like, I, I, Jen, I've only been gone two days. How is there so much stuff in the sink? Oh, so <laughs> so much in the sink. that one? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so for you on Reddit that think that it that I'm abusive to Jenny, just know that it's a two-way street. <laughs> the other Lebowski, the millionaire. Love the channel Thursdays, my favorite new day of the week. As crazy it was, as it was, I wish the Russian footage was real. I know when I first came across it, uh, Jeffrey, I was like, wow, that's awesome. But it was uh, definitely fake. But such a good video. I don't know if anyone, it was so obviously fake. I don't know if anyone was fooled. Why did it, how real did it look? Didn't look that real. All right. Is that Celtica or Celtica? Mm. Well, best channel on YouTube. The bad comments are just a CIA disinformation campaign. Yeah, there's a lot of that on Reddit, too. That there's evidence that this whole thing is funded by the CIA. There's evidence. Okay. Okay. There's Mike, a hundred dollars. They got me in collections and garnishing my wages too. Got guppy support payments, alimony up the wazoo. They repoed my car. I'm living in a jar like a bum. I know that you got money, so why the hell don't you give me some? Mm -hmm. Tip the fish today. Please tip the fish today. Hey, AJ, we really liked your voice. How are we going about setting up something for our commercial? Would love for you to read a script for us. I, I, should I read it for them? I, I mean, I don't mind doing it. It can't be union. <laughs> can't be union. Don't get me in trouble, Micah. Tech, uh, email us. Email us, and uh, and I'll I'll try and do that for you. Uh, He's in a email fight. tonight. I will try and get that done for you t tomorrow. If you hit me with six pages, I'm going to be annoyed. But I, I don't want to. Copy for it. If you don't hear, if you don't get a file back by Tuesday, uh, it, it didn't work out. But, but I'm sorry. But I appreciate the support. I mean, for a hundred bucks, you can drop a little copy. I don't mind. <laughs> Tiki Clock is there for five Canadian. Thanks for making Waffle House. I enjoy that it indulges the fun of these modern myths, but also seeks to be honest about the reality. Uh, that's what we try to do here mixed success um so for gino's story hour gino's in an empty house he just moved here because someone in the chat was saying is gino telling the story from the bottom of mel's hole <laughs> just an empty empty room <laughs> I, I got a blow up mattress right there got a blow there you up go. Mattress and the blow the doll is in the other room but that there's jeffrey for ten dollars why files after files equals aj's group therapy session <laughs> It, it does. And then after the after files, when I'm just talking to the team, then there's even more therapy. Because then then the whole performance, then it's just like, <sighs> Actually, that was cheap, though. and I got to get a new computer. And it was <laughs> awesome. But it was a shit show. <laughs> and that's pretty much our, our rap meeting. That's how that goes. Yep. There's Homer, 1075, $5. Are you a man show or do you have a team? My criticism is you're too hard on yourself. You have a great channel and should be proud of your work. I am proud of it, Homer. Um, we have some some research help, a little bit of writing help that's increasing. And then the folks you see up there on the screen handle all the admin stuff. I'm still doing all the production, but uh, that will be changing too. We have a couple of guys that are helping build out the studio, and pretty soon they're going to start doing some editing which I'm hoping we can get episodes turned out faster 
Yes. Make sure the, I mean, if because if I can get like four episodes ahead, I'll post them all on Patreon because that's that's the rule, right? That's, that's the agreement. Is as soon as an episode is ready, Patreon members get it. So it would be so fun to just lay like a whole month of episodes on the Patreon members, which is a great way to support the channel, by the way. As little as three bucks a month, you get all kinds of perks, two extra live stream chats. Yes. Where you can actually, where the chat isn't crazy, you can actually engage, right? We know who everybody is in that crazy room. Uh -huh. And that all happens on Discord. If you want to jump on Discord, it doesn't cost anything. We'd love to see you there. I'm just checking the chat. Because Jay Freeze is saying, love the story, Gino. Hey, did we all die? I don't get it. Could be. You don't know what this reality is. Boss Lady is giving the Team Y Files applause. Thanks, Boss Lady. There is. What is the matter with you? Sorry. I need to get another Diet Coke. Well, go get. Well, take me off the screen. <laughs> There's Molly and Tomato, $4.99. Wiggle it just a little bit. I say wiggle it. Thanks for the tip, human. I saw her wiggling it. Timu haters complaining from their Chinese made phone slash computers was adorable. So blend it away. Uh, sincere thanks for all you do. Molly and Tomato, very good comment. Yeah, look, if there's something shady about the company, then I want to know that. But if the complaint is they're a Chinese company, and that, I mean, uh, uh, Here's one of the complaints I heard that I don't feel is very a good complaint. They Tell said, us, but also remember that they're sponsoring today. Yeah, they said that that uh, that they are selling things too cheap for the so the companies that they're selling they're going to go out of business. Uh, I I don't understand that those companies could sell on Amazon, they could sell on on all sorts of platforms. I know um, that they're that they're operating at a huge huge loss, but that's only because they're trying to you know do it tech companies do build up of whatever um who's clicking victoria was that you it's my bad i'm okay no that's fine that's fine i just i didn't see i didn't see you, you didn't look guilty so i didn't know if maybe I, something was freaking out here usually you look pretty guilty not, not much of a poker face out. there's a new sacred cow you say you play xbox are you at all interested in starfield um, I am interested in that. It's just, I don't know if it might be too big and slow of a game for me, Sacred Cow. I, I, you know, I tend to, to just like games where I'm, um, slashing or shooting, just violence. But I'm going to check it out. There's Christina Hinks, whose name feels so good in the mouth. Today is Peyton's seventh birthday. And he chose to watch Wi Files tonight. Oh, happy birthday, Peyton. Happy birthday. Let's have Gino sing happy birthday to Peyton. Yeah. Which one? Which version are we allowed to sing? The hip hop version. The freestyle hip hop version. Happy birthday, Peyton. Happy birthday, Peyton. What is your favorite gift? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? All right. Oh, shit. Where he go? wasn't bad right, we got a little freestyle from gino that's right a modern day goldfish lives in style but you haven't tipped in quite a while I gotta pay my rent, or I'll be living in a tent in Portland. Poor Portland. Shane says, Gods of the Bible, Moro uh, Begino talks about Elohim being advanced beings with advanced knowledge. Z Yahweh is just one of many. That comment goes a lot of different ways. <laughs> what? Did she just snigger? 
Well, did she snort? She did. She chortled. She chortled. Thanks for supporting, Shay. We have some uh, Bible legends and myths coming up that I think you're going to like. Make sure you check it out. There's Steve, 40 bucks. Chiggity, chiggity, ching. Instead of remembering the hate, remember I picked up an extra shift at the job I hate with every fiber of my being so I could become a higher tier Patreon member to help support your channel. Steve, you're amazing. You are amazing for doing that. And you don't Thank have to you, do Steve. That. You don't have to do that. Don't, don't suffer. Don't sacrifice. Steve's a good we, one. That's a, that's a good egg right there. Yes. We appreciate okay. you, Steve. There's Dr. Nan Fran, big supporter of the channel. At the end of the day, you can't say that. This is a baby website made for babies. The haters. They can kiss the area distinctly regarded on rats when zero bothers are given. Hashtag <laughs> family. Y'all stay amazed, balls and blessed. I see what she did there. I see what she yes. did there. Yes. Dr. Nan's a good one, too. Possum Holler. Y'all are awesome. You're awesome, Possum Holler. You are awesome. Joshua Aaron Holler says, Timu has an arrangement with the U.S. government. The U.S. covers shipping 100%. Hashtag loophole. I hadn't heard that. That sounds great. Get as much money back from our government as possible. I'm talking about the consumers. Consumers. Yeah. Look, I, you know... It's not China is not our friend, but I'm not fixing to get into a war with them. Are you? Well, I, I'm not fixing to lose our manufacturing. I mean, I need LED lights. I need things. And if we lose that, we're going to lose everything. And we're going to be far behind in technology and phones and things like that. So we rather, we should figure out a way to work together rather than, rather than separate. Taiwan. Taiwan's going. Get your computers now. Sticky Leaf, 100 bucks. That Whoa. guy's a bot. You rock. Keep the amazing content streaming. Sticky Leaf. Uh, it, it's got to be a cannabis brand, right? Oh, yeah. I think. Huh. Cute logo. I mean, I guess I can't search. I'll just get a million things if I search for that. This well, alien on screen looks like he's smoking some Sticky Leaf right now. <laughs> he does. Well, I'm trying to search for it, but you know. Yeah. I mean, do you just do you just want to see how long it takes? Not really, no. Right. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh. oh. Software. Yippee. Sticky Leaf is a fully white label and completely customizable. Giving you a total control of the look and feel of your menus and digital marketing materials. Oh. Dispensaries and delivery services. 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 Sticky leaf. There it is. You missed us by a few years. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know much about the cannabis industry, but that's, it, looks, it looks interesting. <laughs> you might. Austin D, 100 bucks. Fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. that. <laughs> Hola, hombre. Love the threading between episodes. So much intertwined. Shout out to the greatest uh, YouTube team. I always make an effort to be here live when possible. You're one of my must-watch weekly shows. This includes mainstream streaming. Live long and prosper. Thanks, Austin D. Very nice comment. Very nice. I'm glad. I'm glad he's out there. Isaac Galindo. Hey guys, great episode. Thank you. You're welcome, Isaac. I'm glad you're here. Mason Dean says, "I'd buy a hecklefish handpipe." To be honest. <laughs> you're right there. That's gonna that's gonna be in my my private store. <laughs> that's gonna be in secret secret shop. That's why I that home. There is mandible for ten dollars. Where did you get the mini Ark of the Covenant? I need something to stash my weed in. I'm feeling a theme. 
Oh, that's on the set. I forgot where I got that. I think Amazon, but it's actually pretty beefy. Like it's heavy. Like it's you can heavy. you can stash your weed in the. I mean, you put your weed in it for sure. And I don't even think much um, stink would escape. It's pretty beefy. <laughs> It comes with a little staff and a little basket of mana and uh, the Ten Commandments tablets. You gotta take those out before you stash. Well, Thou shall sure. not smoke swag. I think that's the number one commandment. You don't want to smoke that swag. Katie's there. An underground civilization would have much more protection from floods, war, asteroids, and the sun. What are your thoughts on holographic theory being more likely than interstellar travel? Love the show. Hecklefish for president. Do we still have the Hecklefish for president merch up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think holographic theory is more likely than interstellar travel. I just think it's more scientifically feasible. And underground civilization would be protected from all that stuff, especially if they were in the transition zone. Which doesn't mean what you think it means. It's just an area where things change down there. Katie, for five dollars, I also want to know Jen, Vic, and Gino's highlight of their day are two. Bring them on, Victoria. I got uh, three posters from SMK, the official artist of the Y Files, and he surprised me with another two. So I got a full office of amazing artwork. That was awesome. Hmm. Yeah. My highlight of the day, of course, is uh, talking to all our fans, especially uh, the ones who love my uh, story hour. And uh, it's Thursday, so that's what I look forward to. You're in my, my theme music. My highlight of the day was just seeing everything coming together. It's amazing. Everything coming together in your life? At the studio, yeah. At the studio. It's, just, it's amazing. Things are coming together at the studio. See it all happen. Yes. So That's very, very nice of Katie to ask, I thought. Yes. There's Joe P., the official beard of the Y-Files. Thanks for another fascinating episode. Don't let the trolls and haters get you down. The Y-Files is the best channel on YouTube and has the best community on Discord. You so are appreciated. No, you are appreciated, Joe P. And look, you could you could actually communicate directly, speak to Joe P. and his beard. I think every he's there every Friday morning, right? Is he there on the Thursdays as well? Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. you, and from what I hear, hybrid Richard Bramlett is he got fans out there in the world. He's signing autographs. <laughs> yeah, on their day. There. So, um, so yeah, come hang out with Hybrid and, and, and Joe P. Thursday evenings before the episode and Friday mornings. By the way, can I jump in for one second? If, if fans see each other on the street and you see someone wearing y, y Files merch, take a picture with them. We want to see those things to, together. Every time someone stops me with a, with a Y Files merch on, I'm happy to, I, I want to take pictures for, for the Instagram. Um, yes. you know, uh, I've been to a, a few, um, uh, a few different, um, uh, state fairs uh, and county fairs th this summer, and I got recognized at each one of them. So happy to interact with fans live. So cool. And if, you, if you do take that picture, go ahead and send it in, and we'll get you up on the on the board. <laughs> so can't cute. Take, can't even take it. And uh, and your pictures at the end of every episode. Yep. I think. We had a mod visit the studio this week. Mischief. That's right. Wow, a mod visited the studio. Mm -hmm. Mischief came to the studio. It was very cool. It was cool or it was awkward? No, it was cool. Okay. I don't know why you would think it would be awkward. <laughs> Brillo Crash Site Landing Pad is back for $10. Um, the face not improving since the last Super Chat. The Mandela effect is a product of suggestion. Completely agree. Completely agree. Electric Sheeple, $5. Thoughts on doing an episode on the conspiracy that you are really CIA deep state? would love to get your take on the topic. Why files for life? I don't know how interesting that would be, Electric Sheeple. There's so much speculation on the internet. Cat. Cat. I don't know how fun that would be. But um, 
maybe we could talk about it on the on the Discord chat. Well, I would like to know who they think also besides you would be in that group because it can't just be a small group of you. So if you think that they got AJ, who else did they get? It has to be all of us. Right. Oh, I, I meant outside of us. I mean, uh, th there's got to, you know, uh, is Brad Pitt in there? Is, uh, you know, who else is in, in that group? It's Gino asking questions. Ho -ho 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 Machado, 49.99. Whoa. They see me swimming in my waist. Send me money because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl? <laughs> Long time viewer, first time chat, loves the content. Best storytelling on YouTube. Look forward to uh, your content the way folks look forward to must see TV. If you know, you know. Yeah. I remember must see TV. Yep. It's, that's how he did it, right? Oh, yeah. Or he just took the picture and then did it sideways. Uh, that's probably what he did there. Just, that's Jen using the old noggin. There's <laughs> Daniel Doran. Doran, Doran, Daniel D loves the Reddit thread you find. The biologist one and the UFO base in the Bermuda Triangle still have my head spinning. Me too. Me too, man. If you come across any of those in the, you know, in the wild, Daniel, email them over and I'll, I'll get into them. I like just sitting here and reading that stuff for you guys. Uh, Nick Ricardo's there for 20 Australian. Would love your take on the Area 51 caller on Art Bell's Coast to Coast back on September 11th, 1997. Not sure if there's enough for full ep, but I would love you to cover it. I think I can probably make an episode out of that one, Nick. Um, if you don't know, it was it was, it was some of the most compelling radio you would ever hear. Is A guy in a small plane was called Art Bell and said, I'm, I'm flying over Area 51. I'm doing it. I don't care what happens. I'm going. I'm doing it. So he stays on the phone with Art the whole time, and he's saying what he sees. And then um, at some point in the call, he says, there's fighters. There's fighters. They're, they're signaling me to go down. It's, they want me to go down. And, and, and Art Bell's, are you okay? He's, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And that's, it just ends. Whoa. It just ends like that. So I'd like to maybe do that one. Uh, Buckmaw thinks that's the greatest coast to coast ever. I, it's got to be. Ella Mayo, there could be an entire Art Bell episode. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I would cover Art Bell, but you have to cover the dark side of him as well. And I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, but we are going to take a road trip out there to visit visit his grave. I don't know what his, when his death day is. I don't know. Atticus Peck thinks, uh, I was wondering if Victoria is related to AJ and Gino. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because everybody uh, assumes. But. It's funny. John Mason for $5. Interesting that science believes that advanced civilizations could create a Dyson sphere, but the Earth can't be one. Why not? That's interesting, John. Huh. I think that the, that the, I'd never even heard that before, that the Earth is a Dyson sphere. I would have to be a, we'd be we, we'd be a we sphere. We, but who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe stars are small. Maybe, maybe we're we. He just dropped something. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting an extra light on me. <laughs> it's very I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to be a real producer here. Oh, that's <laughs> he's upping his production there. That's John right. 316, 999. Could you do a show on the rapture and the associated alignment of stars and comets? Yeah, we could do that one. That that fits in with the uh, with our religious Bible mysteries. That'd be a good one. Have to we have to tread carefully with that. Astral tides. Thank you for the twenty dollars. The other day, I found my son chewing on an extension cord. His mother almost blew, blew a fuse when I told her. He's grounded now. 
after taking him to a doctor, he's conducting himself much better. Oh. <laughs> You're pretty funny for a human. You like all yeah. those puns in a row there, Jennifer? Of course I do. He loves it. Love a pun. All right, Astral Tides. Mark Dalton enjoys the stories. It's fun, helps the imagination, quality production with fun inserts. Not too serious, not too analytical. Just wanted to send some encouraging words. Lots of love. Thanks, Mark. I'm glad you're out there, and I'm glad that you get the channel. Not everybody does, but uh, but Mark gets it. Any more info on the religion of the in-earthers, says Joshua Banks. You know, I didn't see much on on their religion, Joshua. Some. Some, but most of most of it comes from from the theosophists that I read, like Blavatsky and uh, and Santive. And I, I kind of feel like they make that up as they go along. But I could be wrong. It sounded kind of occulty. I could be wrong. A little occulty. Well, it sounded a little occulty. Eric Bishop. Whoa! Oh. I used to drive a Cadillac. Then I joined this stupid show. The human doesn't pay me much. I need a lot more dough. I need another shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. I need a shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. Awesome episode as always. Little extra in the till for Jen to get a new case of Diet Coke at Costco. <laughs> Much love to Victoria and Gino as well. We actually need another case. <laughs> we do. Thank you, Eric. Much appreciated. Don't you always need just one more case? Just one more case. Just one more case. But, you know, there we also have lots of Monster and Red Bull at the studio for the other three people sitting here in this chat. So... Mm -hmm. Not just Jonathan me. Sar Sarvi of Five Canadian, like always, great episode. Ever seen The Land of Chem on YouTube? Very compelling research on chemistry functions of the Gear, uh, Giza pyramids. I think I came across that channel when I was working on the Tesla episode, but ha it has been a while. But I'm going to leave a note to go back to it. Uh, yep. Yeah, I remember this. Deep dives. There's Ian Victorine. What is your favorite episode of The X Files? I mean, that, without question, that's that's the Luke Wilson. It's the one where Luke Wilson is the sheriff. I don't remember the the season five, but it's a fun episode because it's the same story told by the perspective of Fox and the perspective of Mulder, and you could you see how the details are different. So that would probably be my favorite. Um, I'd like to know if Ian Victorine is a fan of The Lone Gunman, if you remember that one. Good series. Good series. Only ran one season. So Chris Carter develops. He's EP. Um, Vince Gilligan is the head writer on that show, if I recall. Come Maria Ortega, whistleblower are just a form of redacted material. Yeah, you could be right. Could be right. John W., uh, is the Arecibo answer confirmed real? It's not. It's not I don't it's not confirmed fake as far as I know, but it's not confirmed real. I mean, how can you confirm it for sure? Radiation in the plants and all can't explain it. Also, the sphero sphero spheroids around the circles can't explain it. Uh, man that had me in awe, are crop circles still being reported? Oh, yeah. There's crop circle season over there in um in that area of the UK, any sort of databases that we can look, uh, look at. I don't know off the top of my head, but there are. Yeah, I, I would start at circlemakers.org. I, I think they're probably disinfo, as I said in that episode, but you can, you can find them. That's one of those episodes I have to remember when the question comes up, is I went into it very skeptical of crop circles, and I left that episode thinking that there are some, there are some crop formations that can't be explained. I found some UFO videos that were bananas. 
not just the uh, the one where it, it makes it in real time. That's a great one. But some videos of people just in the fields. All right, we're coming up on. Uh, we've not. We're gonna wrap this up in as soon as I can get through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plow my way through these super chats. How's that sound? Do you guys take a take a breather? Thumbs up. Okay. You want to do one for the road? Sure, I'll do one for the road. Hector Rosa for $25. Is Space Panda in Mel's hole? <laughs> mm. I won't rest until Space Panda comes back. Why no Space Panda merch? Um, we don't talk about Space Panda. I think I'd like to bring him back, though. Would, would that be okay? You know what happened last time. Last time was Hecklefish was not not pleased. He's very competitive. Monster Shorts is there five dollars. I got the Alien Invasion book after someone mentioned it last week. Don't read it. It's just a Scientology ripoff. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is. Um, but also a lot of those books, Monster. On um, what is it on Kindle Unlimited? And I don't know what I pay for that. Ten bucks a month or something like that. A lot of those sort of self published books you can get and is. And they're free to read. Like a lot of the books that I need to read for this for the channel, a lot of them I could find on uh, Kindle Unlimited for free. A Mastermind Hour is still waiting for my Gino plushie. Well, you're gonna want to keep waiting on that one. Uh, Frob, Prob, Prob, Aurora. On your personal time, recommended. On your personal time. On your personal time, recommend checking out on YouTube Isha Neck Practices, which is rejuvenating. Then Isha Nadi Shudi, which is amazing for anxiety. It's five minutes, quick, basic yoga. We appreciate all your hard work. All right, I'm going to check that out. Um, Isha Neck. Oh, yeah. Yoga for success. Five minutes. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm open to anything, man. I used to meditate a lot, but I, I have fallen behind. And when, and when you fall behind, it's so hard to get back into it. Andy Manis, today's my 35th birthday. Spending with you guys tonight. Keep up the great work. Look forward to this every week for Bigfoot episode, Legend of Boggy Creek. Uh, Arkansas only cryptid. Yeah, I have um, the Boggy Creek monster on my list. And there's a great mockumentary about it out there if you want to look for that. Tender butt kiss. FYI, chocolate pudding was responsible for downing the plane that my dear parted Martha was flying on. Too soon, man. Too soon. I'm sorry to hear that, Tender. My old man went the same way. Ron Renmon, Renmon, $10. I think I might enjoy the after show as much, if not more, than the episodes. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad for that, Ron. I don't. I don't know why, but I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. This live stream is a mess. You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame, shame on you. Steve Diggle Chunks. <laughs> well, I knew she would like that. Steve Niggle Chunks. A few things. Victoria has the cutest laugh and smile. She does. Second, people who complain about Chinese products must dispose of all their electronics. And final thing is, I love the Wi-Fi. Aww. That's all nice. Right. I thought so too. Thank you, Steve Niggle Chunks. <laughs> I'm going to start calling Jen that around the house. Where's my little Niggle Chunks? She's not pleased. Steely for ten dollars. The pole, uh, the polar regions have strategic military importance. That's true. It's also a more direct route for crossing the major oceans. Why U.S. Europe flights go far north? That's true. That's why. Uh, that's part of why the uh, United States Navy would be there. Good comment, Steely. Thank you. Joey Mania is there. You should do an episode about the Bermuda Triangle. Love the channel and you guys. Don't we have that coming up? We do. Um, coming up. I think, did Barr write like a 300-page script or something? He did. I'm going to have to hack and slash my way through it. It's, uh, yeah, it's like 57 pages or something. Oh! <laughs> 
Too much. We asked him for more information on other triangles. So. Yep. And he gave you some. And he gave us some. <laughs> What's longer, um, a, a script from Mike Mike Barra or the books that he writes? Which are longer? <laughs> it's close, right? Close. So that's coming, Joey Mania, uh, courtesy of Mike Barra. Jules for $10. Uh, love you guys. My Hecklefish Lizard People mug is my favorite. CE5, Close Encounter uh, 5 Contact app for an episode. Yeah, maybe. Dr. Stephen Greer, got to check it, darlings. And we can do Close Encounter. Uh, maybe an episode just on the Close Encounters, like the numbers, what they mean, and a couple of stories from each could be fun. Celtica's back. Second super chat, just to say that the last video was just some Aussies being dumb and going near a Navy ship it was viral years ago. And it's on YouTube. Thanks for that. I had a feeling it didn't look cold enough. It didn't look cold enough, but Aussies being dumb. You know, I, I think one of the most fun nights I ever had was drinking with a bunch of guys from uh, the Aussie army. I, th I remember, I think I had a lot of fun that night. But the second half of it is a blank. Those those boys can drink. Joe, no, my wife and I just became Patreon members. All right. Love you, show, and you guys rock. You rock. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I hope, Joe, that you'll be there tomorrow morning for the Patreon exclusive live stream. And anyone who's super chatted, you know, more than a couple of bucks, if you spend that money on Patreon instead, you get perks like it's kind of, it's, it, I would say, what is it an intimate? It's more intimate chat right? for sure yeah it's really yes. intimate when, G when gino's not wearing a shirt well all right joe we'll see you there tomorrow darla darla sideways bailey please do an episode on the mars teleportation program that barack obama was supposed to be in um he's in a lot of conspiracies most of which we can't talk about um but we do <laughs> My other computer's not working. So many Victorias? So you, look at all of them. My goodness. Um, Mars teleportation program. We have something coming up on that, Darla. And I think you'll like. Red Sonia 13. Here's to falling down the Timo Deep, Timo Deep hole. Oh, yes, I did, and I love it. I was surprised to get like a text from my mom who said, I love Timu. I shop there all the time. Okay, Ma. Wayne Gossen, Gossen Gossen, uh, 10 Canadian. Hey, Jay, can you do a video on when the Nazis tried to trace the Aryan race in Tibet? Maybe. Got to be careful there. And um, they were also looking for Aryans in Antarctica. We covered that a little bit in Operation High Jump. There's a lot of good Nazi stories. I just have to be careful with the algorithm because it misinterprets what I'm trying to say. I'm just telling the story. I'm not endorsing anything, Mr. Wilson, 68758 for $20. I have now watched all your videos, including tonight's. Another great one, I must say. I learned, though, that Hecklefish is always right. <laughs> always. <laughs> I like the way this human thinks. Uh, so now I might have to be a flurf, too. Seriously, the guy is never wrong. All right, there's Hecklefish picking up the flurfs. Toby's tastings, $5, egg-shaped, flat, and hollow. Sounds like the X. <laughs> Good one. There's DSDRN is back for another $20. I'm thinking Caveman Coffee Co. Beans would taste great covered in chocolate. Well, you could always get your own Caveman Coffee Co. Beans at uh, cavemancoffeeco.com. Use the promo code. All right. I'm just kidding, of course. Use the promo code, what, TWF? The y, y no, files? just Y files. Promo code Y files. All right. Get yourself some area uh, Java 51. That's our own special blend. And if you want to drink good. that space coffee. It is pretty good. Will Caddy's there, 1999. Dang. I almost want a plush tonight. Yeah, I saw your name pop through there, Will. Speaking of, on the next round of plushies, can we get one uh, with one with Mr. Moriarty's best jokes? Varginia, Uranus, Blowfish, etc. That's channel on the tube, you guys rock. I think we can do that, Will. I'd like to find a way to 
ha- to be able to update that voice box without, you know, sending another plush. I don't know what the um. Are you are you we're signaling? Working, we're working on it. We're gonna what? with the different hats. We're working on it so we can send a new voice box that has different sayings than the ones he's got in there. So when you switch his hat, MS- can- what would be the MSRP on something like that? Because the boxes aren't that expensive, right? No, no. I mean, I, I think would think already would- pre-made. You just load them with the files. Yeah. So, and then you just swap them out of out of his belly hole. You got to take it out of his belly hole to put batteries in it anyway. There she goes. Little Miss Belly Hole. Paul F. for $10. Thanks for another great show. And one, and from one Gen X to another, thanks for keeping us relevant. We're the best generation, man. We're the funny generation. They lost their sense of humor. And I don't know why it happened, but as Gen X, we have to look at ourselves because it's our kids. Chumley, Gino may be onto something with the moon craters. The moon used to be really close to us. It's slowly moving away. Craters don't make sense. And that, right. Yeah, that um, theory again came to, to me from um, one of our Discord members named Nicodemus. So uh, shout out to him. And uh, it really, uh, it was the first time I thought about it when he brought it up that, you know, if we're tidally locked, how come we're not seeing angles that they're hitting? How are they hitting straight and making perfect circles they should be skidding along if you know something is up with the moon no question about it thanks for the support chumley there's montana of assyria for 7.99 australian give this to hecklefish you got it whoa this is one smart human are you sure you're not pot goldfish there's carrie wilson for 20 dollars. loves the show have you guys thought about doing a show about the curse of tippecanoe a great story involving a great Native American hero and lots of dead American presidents. That's that's true. I think it would be fun to explore. That could be a good one. I like the Native legends. Gizmo D's there. Final Frontier from the Nerd Rodic YouTube gave the Waffles a huge shout on their live stream last Sunday, saying how great y'all are. Would love to see a collab video with both of y'all. Ignore the haters. Well, thanks, Gizmo. Um, yeah, I saw that shout out. It was very nice of, of Gary to, to say nice things about the channel. And um, I will probably be on Final Frontiers sometime in October. David, for $20, just want to say me and my wife watch the Waffles every week. It's our new hook. Want to see you guys talk about the bottom of the ocean alien soon. Also, tell my wife, Lacey, to let me buy a Hecklefish plush. (laughs) David, what you do is you tell her that you're buying the plush. Is that right, Jenny? Is that how you do it? That's not how you do it. How do you do it? What's the right way to do it? He asks her if he can buy the plush. Is it her money? Well, I don't know. I'm not in their li- their business. Do you think they need a divorce? No, I don't. Okay, I'm just asking questions. I'm not saying they do. I'm just asking what you thought. I don't think so. I thought you were making eyes like maybe they're not right for each other. There, was, there were no eyes. They, There were no eyes. There were no eyes? No. Well, Reddit says they can read your face. Michelle rolls there for 4444. <laughs> I'm a fish and I'm a star. So put more dough in my jar. The type of vodka that I need is Belvedere. I need to buy a tinfoil hat. So please click the super chat. We all know the government is listening. Let's hear it for Victoria. Let's hear it for Victoria. Ele- elevating the show with, with the dance moves. Michelle Roll, thank you for the 4444. I love the, your channel and shows. Haven't slept much 
since I started binging all the episodes. Got to find a way to keep some work, get some work done and keep watching. Are you guys hiring? Keep on rocking it. Well, Michelle, if you're in the uh, Las Vegas area, send over your CV. Thomas Ritchie for 639 tinted reading glasses are hit at the office now to work on Mel's, now work Mel's hole into a team's meeting. Go get him, Tom. Go get him. There's Rick Howe Jr. Hello from Trinidad, Colorado. Love your show. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate the support. Couldn't do this without you guys. So really, thanks for keeping us alive here with the Super Chats, with the buying the merch. I don't know if we sold any merch tonight. With the new um, with the new merch partner, it's, it's hard for me to tell. But that's uh, shop at the Brandon Gaines for $10. What are your thoughts on that great white shark that was being tracked a few years ago? It was mysteriously and rapidly dragged to the depths off the coast of Australia, I believe. I need Gino for that one. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly of that one, but there is definitely a lot of sh weird shark activity because um, they are um, starting to GPS a lot of sharks. And um, people are talking about that the Megalodon might be real because all of a sudden they'll be tracking sharks and it, it'll go from one place to, to super far away um, without and then disappear. So possibly being eaten by a Megalodon, things like that. But uh, the, tra the shark trackers are, again, uh, interesting because it shows where they are um, when, when they get pings. And then sometimes they'll just be way across the ocean. Um, and uh, there, you know, there is a group uh, of people that are like following it and talking about the conspiracy theory of it, of there being number one megalodons and number two, whatever's going on with the sharks that they could travel this far. Um, in such a short amount of time. Something's going on with the sharks. I'll, I'll, I'll bring some of those. Uh, I, I have a lot of those videos. I'll bring those next week. I yep. just never thought they would be interesting enough for, for the Y files, but if, if we're interested in them, there's plenty of them. And uh, again, uh, it just doesn't, it, it defies what is possible on how far they can swim in a, in a certain amount of time. David Blair. Whoa. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Human. I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough. Tipping, as I'm sure you will find, always is a good time. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs> Heavy hitter David Blair asks, do you think the hollow earth has something to do with the palace hum? I don't know. You know, it, I don't know if that hum would travel that far. I don't know how it would reverberate that way. But we, ha we do have an episode coming up on sounds like this, don't we? Mm -hmm. we do. home, the bloop. What else is in there? Sky trumpets, sky quakes. Sky trumpets. Dead zone in there? Dead oh, zone. Oh, yeah, the zona de silencio. Oh, the zona de silencio in, in Mexico. See. Si. See. Si. All right, so that stuff is coming up, David. And um, if Hollow Earth is not in that, I don't think I'm writing that. Am I writing that? No. So if uh, Hollow Earth is not in there, I'm, I'm going to work it in for you. 500 bucks. Triton, Triton, Triton for 13 Canadian. Do you know of Joseph Spencer, ex-CIA? Is he legit? Predicted pandemic and the year, as well as a fake alien invasion in 2024. Could Grush be sent to inform and scare the public to sell the invasion? I don't know about some of that stuff, Triton, but but also some of it could be could be true. Kind of just have to wait and see. You know, I don't. <laughs> have to wait and see. But um, but I think you might be onto something. I just hope we're both wrong. All right, there they go. There's Angie11S for 30 Australian. Love today's episode. Hi to Hecklefish and all the team. Cheers from Australia. Cheers to you. Thank you for supporting, Angie. 
There's Dumpster Diving Dragon, 777. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. No, I can't tell you who to sock it to. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Stacy Lindsay, 1999. Have a guy at work that is getting paranoid with conspiracies. I told him should start watching your channel so he can get a sensible view. I think that's smart, Stacy. Um, but don't try to convince him. Let him believe what he's going to believe. Christina Abma, Abma, Christi Christina A, 50 bucks. <laughs> Just want to celebrate another day of swimming. I just want to celebrate another super chat. Put my faith in you humans, and you humans let me down. Then you give me a shekel, and it turns my heckle frown upside down. I just want to celebrate, yeah, yeah, yeah. another day of swimming. Thursday nights are officially our Wi Files and Thai food night. Oh, that sounds good. Interesting episode is the Jinn of Omar, yeah, or Harp, or Project Stargate. North and South Poles are definitely strange. Have you heard of the Magnetic Mountain, supposedly in the North Pole? I have. I have. Might, maybe it might be a fun episode on some of the, the mountains and pyramids that are at the poles. Could be fun. Uh, harp? I did Harp, didn't I? Didn't I do a whole episode? Did I, I did Harp recently, didn't I? I remember, I specifically remember the B-roll. Harp is there somewhere. It's there somewhere, and, but I don't know that you've done a whole episode on it. Maybe not. So if you guys don't know, Harp is the project that's up in Alaska that um, that costs millions of dollars to build, but it's supposed to be just like track weather. But it's believed that it's used for mind control, weather control, creating earthquakes. I'm typing to the Discord. They're wondering why I'm sleeping on the floor. <laughs> but strangely enough, that's Carmen's bed. That's not even my bed. That's hers. <laughs> I have a, I have a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Zeb said we covered harp like two months ago. Okay. And what? Zeb, Zeb the super fan would remember. Mm -hmm. And Project Stargate, we've definitely covered a, in a few different ways. Krista, um, what would be a good one to to play with? The Ingo Swan video is fun. He talks he, he, he talks about uh, aliens on the moon. I think, uh, do we get into some, the people that stare at goats in that episode as well, maybe? Yeah. I forget. But we go, we, go to, we go back to that Stargate well from time to time because it's such a good well and it's so deep. And we are the channel that focuses on holes. TN, Tennessee Gunrunner, $10. Do you have any thoughts on William Cooper and his book, Behold a Pale Horse and All the Craziness at the End of His Life? I, I try not to get into him because of the craziness at the end of his life. But um, Cooper made some predictions. I don't want to say too many of them, but he made predictions that came true. 9-11 and Osama bin Laden specifically. He, I think he predicted it right down to the month. And then uh, didn't, got a case of bad luck. Cameron Button for two pounds. AJ is Tom Cruise's brother. Prove me wrong. What chef uh, for five Australian? I mean, I prefer to be his brother than Jimmy Doors. No offense, Jimmy, if you're watching. Dropping by to say hi and thanks again for birthday message you did a few weeks back. Regards, Chris. You're welcome, Chris. Happy to do it. Appreciate the support. There's Rom. Loves the show. Hoping to see some content based on Asia, especially from China and India. I think, well, we hit a little bit of that tonight. And um, I think we asked the production team, are we doing the episode on the alleged thermonuclear explosion that happened in ancient India? That had been our list, but it's not on the production calendar, but we can we can get it on there. I mean, just uh, just on the list to consider. Because that's it's a pretty on the list good. to consider. Yeah. And uh, we have talked about the Vimanas in a few episodes, then the ARV episode specifically, Ram, if you want to check that out. Oh, does he have minions? Is that what I'm looking at? He does. And I'm annoyed because I've been trying to find some minions to come work at the office. And I can't find any. Well, 
I'm sorry to hear that she's so annoyed about that. But there's Triton is back for six ninety nine. Oh, Joe Spencer, XCI uh, needs to be looked at. I looked again. He's predicted too much. Twenty twenty four millions will die. He needs to be dis debunked or disclosure ASAP. Do you know anything about this one? No. Next CIA. Joseph Spencer CIA predictions. I'm looking for some that are not all videos. A bunch of videos. A lot of TikToks, which is not a good sign for truth. No offense, TikTok. Well, I'm going to look into that, Triton. What? What is that, my boy? That's your boy. Where are you? Can't even stand it. There's Brett Iski, Iski Brett I for five dollars. Any plans to do an episode on the recent UFO crash called the Mage Incident in Brazil in 2020? I didn't hear that one, uh, Brett, but there's a lot of good UFO stuff in that area. Writing that down now. Yep. People saw aliens after a UFO crashed in Brazil. No, that's not the one. Mysterious orb spotted in Brazil just days after alleged UFO crash cover-up. All right. Mysterious bright orb hovering above the village, uh, a village in Rio, just days after an alleged... Alien UFO crash in the same area has sparked a social media frenzy. I mean, there's, that's an orb. Is there sound? There's no sound. Footage of a bizarre UFO hovering above a village near Rio early this month, uh, sending social media into a meltdown. The footage, taken on May 18th, captures a bright white orb moving over a small village before appearing to vanish. The video was filmed just a few days after the alleged UFO crash that took place in Mage, Brazil, and sparked online conspiracies about a cover-up. Yeah, because cover-ups are not not real. What, what dumbass oh, the exp Express says. That's why. That's why. No offense if that's your paper. Um, we're looking into that, Brett. That's a good one. Tyler's there. Share a joint with Gino. Come to KC, then bring a, a crab cat bottle with you. Thanks. All right, that sounds like a weekend. What? What are you doing? What's happening? Well, we're going to... We're gonna to go to KC with with a Gino joint and a crab cat bottle. Oh, do you know of okay. any any good places to hang there? I do. Why would you know that? Because that's where I grew up. Kansas City girl. Going to Kansas City, Kansas City. Here I come. Amy Max Productions TV. My favorite thing besides Hecklefish is watching AJ drop his chair to start the video. Yeah, I mean. I stopped doing that one week and the comments were crazy. People needed to have it because I thought it was kind of, I don't know, silly. I mean, that's why I started doing it kind of silly, but now it's just a thing, but I'm glad you like it, Amy. Amos Swigart's there. What if I told you I want to be an alchemist because you showed me the book of Aquarius? Do it, man. Get your philosopher's stone going. There he is, working on the Philosopher's Stone. Nick Newson for $5. Thanks, AJ, for pointing out that UFO UAPs could be coming from our planet. Will there be a musical talking hacklefish plushie in the future? That's a good idea. Um, we've talked about doing, I guess, the different voice boxes for him, but then also maybe doing a hacklefish like album or Spotify playlist or something with all of all of the things, all the songs that he sings. 
So he loves to sing that one. Uh, we going to him, get him a bigger bowl if his head gets any bigger. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, DDD Dumpster Diving Dragon for 420. Hey, bud. <laughs> I see what you did there. And Hecklefish, this bud is for you, my lord. I'm sure he'll be very appreciative. Thank you, Dumpster Diving Dragon. Richard Bramlett <laughs> for $20. I do not have fans, LOL. Well, hybrid, your fans would disagree with that you, statement. Now, very quickly, you're going to have to tell the story. So Richard was checking into a place and he had a white file shirt and the guy at the desk was like, white files, I'm white file. I love white files. I'm on Discord. And Richard said, I'm hybrid. And he was like, oh my God, you're hybrid. You're Discord famous. Like he was very, very excited to meet Richard. I mean, we all are. But it was fun to have an in the wild sighting of a fan. So that's the story. And and Richard shouldn't shouldn't send money, and we should be sending money to him. For doing a great job. Yes. What is this? Melissa, five dollars for Nugget and Bean. That's so nice. Those are our kitties. Who are both? Those are my That's um, where I was. I was feeding the cats. Jenny, can you help me out with the this name? Mm. Take your time. Recremorsen. Re Recremorsen. Lemniscate. What? Okay. Well, you Go say ahead. it. Oh, no, I like to race it. Superconductivity has the theoretical potential to create Dyson spheres, possibly naturally, which would be a hollow planet. That's true. I just don't know what the energy source would be at the center of that. I don't know. Well, I'm going to let you go, Jenny, because it, you're going to get bored. I, I, I don't know what the energy source would be because we have um, – because the core would be hot, but I, but I don't know if that would create enough energy. Dyson Sphere, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it, but if you're not, Dyson Sphere is a it's – a, it's a giant structure in space, and what – the civilization that creates the Dyson Sphere does is they build a shell around their star. And the inside of the shell is the Goldilocks zone. So if we're 93 million miles away from the sun, right, we would, we would have a Dyson Sphere with a radius of 93 million miles. So think about the surface area. So it's been it, – that's, that's Dyson created the theory. But it would – I think it was measured that it would require like all the material in our solar system and we wouldn't be able to do it. But how cool would it be to come across one of those? TNG fans will remember that uh, Dyson Sphere episode is the one where, where Scotty showed up on the Enterprise D. John Anderson is there looking like a Templar Knight. I love an episode of Hecklefish hiding out on the real ISS and the live stream cutting out just as Mr. Naughty does when he comes into view. Great job, all. We may have to have Hecklefish go up in the ISS and um, try to find those wires. You know, you've seen those videos. Those those astronauts are on wires, aren't they? Man, I just saw one. I thought I put. I thought I sent sent it in, into our videos to look at. Um, maybe I didn't, but uh, he. It's a guy. It's a Russian cosmonaut, um, and he's supposed to be in space. And he goes oh, and like he's floating, and he goes over backwards. To grab something and you see it fall right off the wall. So no, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm I'm surprised. I, I I thought I sent that one in, but I'll I'll get that for next week. For next week, we'll have to go through a bunch of uh, video, like with the hair. The hair's like just looks like hairspray hair. It's not really floating. And yeah. Some videos you could swear you can see where the wires would be connected. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's just uh, there's so many that um it's not like hey there's just one or whatever there's so many videos that th there's obviously something something going on and uh it, it's it's not talked about enough because it, it winds up just being fringe theory you know like uh conspiracy fringe conspiracy instead instead of uh you know because you know there's so much to be concerned about it in, in on 
on the earth and in the world, people don't care about, about these things, but they should, they should care that, it, that we're being lied to. I'm looking up a couple of videos, but it's just, they're just buried. The, the search engines do not want you to find them. So the first video I get, the first video I get, I get about the wires is wire pulling debunked hashtag flat earth. Hashtag NASA short. It doesn't have anything to do with flat earth. That could be part of it. But there are some videos. Maybe you need DuckDuckGo to find it. There are some videos where it looks fake. I mean, there was that one, uh, Gino, and I don't know if you saw, where it's the astronaut. It's like the of him like move, playing with a tennis ball in space. And then the video ha it shows guys like walking around the NASA's, I don't know what you'd call it, the room you know, with the screens and everything. And in the back, you can see that astronaut with the tennis ball on a green screen. Uh, I haven't seen that one, but you know, how obvious is that? Why would, why would they green screen in space? What, what, what do you got a green screen in space for? Crazy. All right. So we'll have some of those uh, next week. Look, you don't have to believe them. They're just fun. Like the, um, the, the space shuttle crew that, uh, that allegedly died in the takeoff there uh, there's that conspiracy that they didn't and they're walking amongst us it's a, i would like to cover i could probably get into it on the after files i couldn't do do it on the main channel youtube would crush it i almost did that uh two weeks ago um as the story when when uh on in when we did the july 20th it'd episode. be a good one it'd be um, a good one and uh, it's six of the seven astronauts um, could be someone else. Some of them have the same exact name. Two of them were twins. And, and there's no birth record of the twins. So it's, how, what is the probability of there being two twins on that same flight? The other one that's really interesting is uh, uh, the CEO of one – you know, one of the, the astronauts who is supposedly alive has the same exact name. He's going, going by the same name. And he's the CEO of a company. And the logo of the company looks like the smoke from the Challenger. Yep. Um, so, so you know, it's really interesting. I'm, you know, of course, I, I hope that wasn't uh, – well, I guess I hope that was a lie. I hope they didn't blow up. But um, certainly uh, – it. It, it's a it's a weird one. It's it, it, to to decide if it's better that they're alive or worse. I I don't know the answer. Uh, and the woman, the other woman, um, not McCullough, but the other woman that was on on the flight. There is video of her person that supposedly her, and you could see they have the same mannerisms when they talk. There, and this isn't a related person. They have the same exact name. And well, why don't you, can you pull this together for next week? So we can have some visuals to go with this. Absolutely. All right. That's going to be fun. That's a good one. There is Mariko Matsuo. 99. Shout out to Hecklefish. My nickname for Mr. H. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. Appreciate that, Mariko. The support. There's Blank Canvas. Life Wanderers is back for another 20. Can we get an airplane flying through pudding shirt? Great analogy. Yeah. As I was saying that analogy, Blank Canvas. The other voice in my brain was like, what are you talking about? That was the, that was what you came up with. That was your, that's the one that you went with. You know, it, I hate it when, when, when good jokes go bad. Angie 11 S is back for seven 99. Love this chat on my day off. This is my new favorite channel. Keep up the fantastic stories. Cheers. Thanks Angie. I'm glad you're here. There's the cheapest big spender with the docs. Thanks for the tip, human. Uh, here's a tip for you. Don't eat the yellow snow. Have you listened to any of Milton, William, Bill Cooper stuff I have? We talked about him earlier. And who do you think is doctor's worst enemy? Weeping angels are mine. Now statues seem to be staring at me. Weeping angels, uh, probably the scariest. Concur? Weeping angels are scary, right? Terrifying. Those are the angels. That's Doctor Who. That the, they're stone angels. And you turn around, and when you come back, they're closer to you. Right. Don't they, play. they can't move. They can't move if you see them, right? They're time locked. So if you're looking at them, they can't move. But if they touch you, they send you into some different point in time. And you can't get back. You just have to, like, live out your life in a, in a different time period. 
which is crazy. I mean, the, the Daleks and the um, Cybermen can just kill you. Although the children, remember the creepy children with the gas masks? Are you my mummy? Where's my mummy? Those, they were terrifying. Are you my mummy? Was a, that was, those are scary. Creepy one. Uh, the mannequins in the first episode were, cre were creepy too. Uh, Daddy Slonk is there. Hollow Earth Aliens solves the Fermi paradox. It sure does. Life on other planets isn't rare. Life on the surface of other life on the surface of other planets is like the way you think. Daddy Slonk, nicely done. Allegedly controversial for Ten Canadian. My uncle was chief chief of the Dene in uh, Canada. He did an interview about his UFO experience as a kid on an ABTN show called Indians and Aliens. I never heard that show, but I feel like I would like it. James Johansson, crypto terrestrials and the UFO slash USO connection should be explored further. Love the show. Interesting. Interesting. There is David Alderman. Just stumbled across the channel uh, in the past few weeks. Want to say love the videos. Love how they make me think outside of everything I know. That's the best compliment you could pay, David. Thanks for supporting. I'm glad you're out there. Casey Jones, thank you for twenty dollars. Keep great episode. Keep it up. All right, I'm trying, and I appreciate everyone's support tonight. By the way, it's very very helpful. Look, this is this isn't as easy as it looks. Oh no, not not that one. This one. There we. There they are. There is, oh, Elaine Seal Sloan is there. Good to do a show on ley lines and vortices. Vortexes. I stepped off in a vortex one time and was pulled back. would like to know more about them. Um, something like that's coming up. I want to do an episode on portals. I think it would be the same thing. So tying it into ley lines, that's perfect. Elaine, you're hired. Nice job producing. Jake Best is back. Crab, cat, whiskey, yes. Also, can we crowdfund to buy in? AJ Rock, brother, it's one of the greatest shows ever assembled in human, non-human history. I, you know, I lean against crowdfunding, Jake, because it's like, you know, I, if I'm going to sell something for profit, I feel like it's only fair that I take the financial risk. Um, I could be wrong. You know, maybe crowdfunding would be fun because then everybody is involved. Maybe everyone owns a piece of the company or something. I don't know. But I just, I, I didn't even like taking money up front for the Hecklefish plushies, but it was the only way we could afford to get them done. But I like the way you think, man. Wyatt Reeves. AJ, what do we have to do to get you on Rogan? We'd love to see a clip of him from your interview with him on the Y Files one Thursday. You never know, Wyatt, but um, but you know and I were on Rogan's show a couple of years ago. Had a good time. I just I don't know how interesting I would be because I'm I don't know anything. I just talked to a fish. There's Nutsacks 909, because Nutsacks 908 was taken. What are your thoughts on CERN? Um, I think I think it's probably the theories are a little bit overblown. Nutsacks, but uh, but I think there is something going on there. What's the matter with you? What is the matter with you? I just love how you have to just you just keep saying the name. Just keep saying it. Keep going along. Kicking it, Edwards, for thirty-three dollars. Um, if you had the funding to find Agartha, would you pursue the quest? You know, I don't really do well in cold weather. <laughs> yeah, but there are some entrances into Agartha that are not in the cold weather. That's true. I mean, kicking it. If you know how we can get in, I'll see if we could get the funding together. I know that every private um voyage to the south pole has failed and they've been trying to get down there for 20 years it has failed i want to thank everyone for super chatting tonight we couldn't do this without you i really really appreciate it it keeps the channel going um please consider becoming a member on patreon for as little as three bucks a month you can support the channel you get all kinds of perks like a, a very intimate live stream tomorrow morning and also live streams just for you on thursday nights before the episode you also get to see the episodes early with no commercials no spots no sponsors none of that stuff and um thanks for buying the merch you can grab your hecklefish plushie that you saw those are being made right now and um victoria thank you so much for your help tonight 
There she goes. Gino, great Gino story hour. Looking forward to Challenger next week. There's Jenny. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next week. And Hecklefish, we'll see you out. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each, each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried, I've had my fill. My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all It's all so amusing Do you think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way Oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way, for what is a fish, what has he got, if not himself, then he has not, to save the fish. Take care of those waitresses, will you? All right. Everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it. My.